Hey guys, when we did the uh, DFF awards, we announced that we would be releasing three, count them, one, two, three, of the uh, patron-only private episodes to the public. And the first of those is going to be happening tonight. And it is going to be the episode that we did back in April about uh, prohibition. The stipulation is that as we discuss prohibition, we get drunker and drunker and drunker. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. Should be amusing. Take a look. Behold, a group of degenerate wets protesting through the streets with their communist rhetoric. We want beer? Well, you can get plenty of beer in hell, degenerate commie scum. This is the age of prohibition on DFF. Deep of the Frank. Oh yeah, motherfuckers. How's it going tonight? How's it going tonight? You know tonight? what, TJ? Fuck that low energy TJ intro. <laughs> that, what? Patrons, are you ready for the most epic face melting motherfucking deep fat fried yet? The most scintillating shit you've ever paid $5 for in your life. It's time for the prohibition episode of DFF. <laughs> You should have been like, patrons, degenerate scum, lend me thy ears. And then you should have led us in a chant of, we want beer, we want beer, we want beer, we want beer, we want beer. Moonshine. Oh, whatever. You know what we want? We want alcohol, TJ. Beer is pussy shit. That's why they're degenerate commie scum, man. We got the the moons. I got my testicle moonshine here. Scotty's sipping on the pina colada. Show show your moonshine, Scotty. What kind of moonshine is it? It is pina colada moonshine. If you like pina coladas and getting too drunk to speak. And then TJ's got a little of the same I've got here. It's cherry pie, actually. Cherry pie with testicles. <coughs> so, but it's got balls we'll, in it. We'll switch. We'll let Paul drink some and TJ drink some pina colada mm. at some point. Supple. Pinky's out, gentlemen. Pinky's out. Ooh, that is strong. Oh, <laughs> man. Hacha, 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 wucha, wooba. This fucking shine. Hoodly, woodly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm ready I'm to straight, drink. Straight from a Tennessee. Not, not any. We haven't had any yet. None yet. Uh, but we're working None on it. None as of yet, sir. We're working on it, guys. And if you're not drinking with us, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> you're a stupid fucking ridiculous. Ooh. Celebrate of the freedom shit. that your fucking forefathers gave to you. What so, other flavors we got? We don't have any other flavors. So we should probably start where we started last night, which is saying that we are going to do our best. <laughs> Why doesn't TJ have a jar? Because I'm going to just... When I when this glass is empty, they'll top me off, man. He'll get some pina colada then. Yeah. <laughs> Work tomorrow, retards. I'm just saying, we're going to treat... Work tomorrow, not hotter. We're treating this shit seriously. Serious. Serious <laughs> business. On, sir, we have a big show for you guys tonight. I yeah. spent six hours... Straight, just compiling the stuff. <coughs> Not that that doesn't count time it took to look for it. Just putting everything together in the way that we're going to pr- okay, put it. But to how much you of that was also jerking off? To and hopefully there was a lot of jerking off. <coughs> but that disaster. But at least at least too. thirty-five minutes of research was put into this fucking. At thing. least thirty-five solid solid minutes. straight minutes. I mean, we're talking Paul looking at a fucking screen and going like, "Oh shit, I gotta get this shit done." Oh fuck. No, I actually did spend no, a Paul, lot of time. Paul pulling. fucking <laughs> spent <laughs> a shit ton of time. At least. At least four or five minutes copy and shit between from In Wikipedia. between orgasms. After he rubbed one out, he's like, fuck, I get some we work done. We took this episode Serious. so fucking seriously. I, I crafted a journey for us you did. tonight. You did, A Paul. journey. And mostly through the eyes of, <laughs> of the people who lived it. Exactly. We give it I wanted to understand beautiful. why this happened, and I wanted to understand... What the people who ad like the big names who advocated for it and against it were, who they were, and what impact they had, 
rather than just looking at the facts, rather than just going, you know, the Volstar Act was passed in oh, this year, and then it was, you know, <coughs> look, dude, dude, look Paul, at the if you want, if you want Paul, the complete take what? of prohibition, what you know what? who's in here, dude? Who? Toast Woozy, dude. Toast Woozy's here? Yeah. Was the Toast Woozy? The fucking, the one and only Toast Woozy, everybody. Oh, my uh, God, guys. Well, look, uh, I thought Toast Wheezy was going to show up, so I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest. Well, to I mean, we, we would never you. draw Toast Wheezy, but Toast Woozy's almost as good as Toast Wheezy. Yeah, almost. I mean, comparable, but... 70% is good. But, no, what we're saying is, this is the d- fucking diluted version of Prohibition. There's a, a great documentary by Ken Burns that covers all the shit on Prohibition, and it's fucking what 20 hours long uh something like that i mean so like if it's a hard subject to fucking really capture the essence of it but i'll tell you what paul did a great job compiling all the shit no he didn't and, and failure some, and failure, actually miserable failure we just talked about one of the myths and we'll get to that later but a myth that actually me and him both believe for years yeah, when i started looking into this i believed something that was completely untrue about prohibition and we'll get into that <laughs> but um I don't know. You guys, you guys want to do some more banter here, or do you want to jump right into this shit? I'm gonna light this. So, uh, well, yeah, yeah. <coughs> duh. I oh, mean, yeah, you well, should you should have been doing that. Yeah, light your minutes ago. Light your cigarette, TJ. Light that cigarette up. Cigarettes that you like to deeply inhale. Cigarettes you love. Scotty is allowing me to uh, smoke a cigarette in yeah. the house. Because I'm smoking one, too. Because this so. is prohibition. So we're each yeah, we're not gonna prohibit anything tonight. A hand rolled. Tobacco. Delicious tobacco cigarette for yes. myself. What man ca- shouldn't be able to enjoy that in his abode? I agree. I agree. Anyway, should we start at the start, gentlemen? Are we ready? I think we should all take a slug <coughs> here. Take a swig and do a jig. And you out there watching <coughs> with us, <coughs> Nazdrovia, this is to you. Oh, my God. Ah. Okay. Crisp. And fresh pussies. So, to you guys' knowledge, I'm when drink, did dude. the sentiment <coughs> for prohibition of alcohol the really sediment? start? What are you talking about? Sediment, dude. Sediment exists for like millions of years. The, the, the sentiment. Of the sediment. sentiment. Oh, the sediment. Layers I mean, the sentiment. I mean, um, sentiment. Yes. Shortly after the Civil War. It's actually way before that. Even before that? That's why I know. It actually happened. Um, a few years after our nation was born, during the presidency Birth of George W. Of Bush. Nation. That's what we got here, the whiskey. George W. Bush. George W. Bush? <laughs> yeah, George, when George W. Bush, our first president. Yeah. The third president of the United States, Quit George. Quit like that was intentional. All right. So what, you mean, do you mean George rebellion? Washington? TJ George with Washington. the salty call also out already. Also known as the Whiskey Insurrection. Yeah, the Whiskey was Rebellion. Was a tax protest in the United States beginning in, ni- in sorry, 1791 during the presidency of George W. Bush. Oh, I mean George Washington. <laughs> Good joke, TJ. Uh, the so-called Whiskey Tax <laughs> was the first tax imposed on a domestic product by the newly formed federal government. It became law in 1791 and was intended to generate so TJ, revenue for the war debt incurred during the Revolutionary so TJ, War. The tax let applied me ask you a to question, all TJ. spirits. I don't want your dry recitation of fact, TJ. I want to ask you a fucking question, you piece of What's shit. What's your dumbass, moronic, idiotic, fucking stupid question? My fucking question is this, dude. Did the government... Fucking force people to pay the tax, dude. What did George Washington fucking do, TJ? Well, I'm getting to that. I, I don't know. I don't want this dry. And in 1770? No, TJ. I want you to fucking tell me as a fucking man what happened, TJ. It's just a little paragraph, you know. Yeah, I mean. You can't fucking paraphrase, TJ. Then what fucking good are you? I right, can paraphrase. I'll paraphrase. George Washington went and scared the shit out of the whiskey rebellers. He took 15,000 motherfucking yes, he soldiers. Did. He rolled up and he said, led them personally pay too. the fucking tax, bitch. Yeah. Well, you know, the the, gov- the federal government at the time was uh, new, obviously. It, people weren't really sure what its authority really was over them yet, but they pretty much showed them definitively, they knew. Nah, we own you, bitch. And this really w- didn't wasn't over prohibition of alcohol. It was about whether the federal government had the right to, to tax, tax it. it. Yeah. But it's really the <clears throat> first time you see alcohol being a political issue in the United States, and I wanted to point it out because it happens immediately. Now, here's a picture. We showed it yesterday on the botched, failed stream, but we'll show it again here today. Yeah. This is a picture of a bunch of uh Ruffians, our ancestors, our beautiful little old ancestors. Yeah, dude. Tarring and feathering a tax collector. 
Uh, you see, the, the, I love the dude with the sign that's just like, no tax. Yeah, fuck. No well, tax. Well, dude, you're talking people that weren't paying tax. And now, t- okay, TJ, imagine you're fucking, you're some dumbass fucking farmer. Right. And I come up to you and I'm all like, because you know I don't like me. I'm like, Scotty, that fucking douchebag Scotty's here. And I'm like, hey, TJ, you make some fucking whiskey this year? And you're like, yeah, I did. You gotta pay a fucking tax on it, bitch. And then you go, says fucking who? The federal government. You're all like, I ain't never heard of that bullshit. But th- but think about this, though. These are not just people who suddenly like were subject to taxes. This- these are people that very recently to this time went through a rebellion to free themselves from unfair from taxation. unfair taxation and now all of a sudden they've done that but everybody what did they celebrated say? and then all of a sudden yeah now all my shit's taxation subject to a tax without representation but right at but that see, point they in essence did have representation the thing, arguably people were the same as they were of back course. then now they didn't want to pay any fucking they, well taxes. not only that but they didn't know the distinction they didn't know the distinction between no taxation without representation and just no tax Hence the guy with the no tax flag. Exactly. Well, but, but I mean, let's be honest. I no one wants to pay taxes this. to begin with. There's never been a time in history where we're like, I want to pay tax. No, no one Man, wants to I pay taxes. Man, I can't wait to pay my fucking taxes. Can't wait to... F- and that's what I'm saying. And someone rolls up and tells you now that some fucking faraway fucking government entity, which you don't really know shit about, wants you to give them money. You're like... Head- headphones on, gentlemen. All right, fine. I'm play headphones some, on. I'm going to play a video about this whiskey rebellion. All right, play the fucking video, teacher. As the United States government worked at solving its problems with France and Britain, trouble developed at home in the normally peaceful farm country of western Pennsylvania and Kentucky. I still resent the implication of... Kentucky as a peaceful place. Well, it was peaceful then, dude. (laughs) I bet it was was pretty peaceful peaceful. then. (coughs) People in these areas raised wheat, corn, and rye, and they used some of the grain to make whiskey. It was perfectly legal to make whiskey, but U.S. law said that persons who did so had to pay a tax. In tax on alcohol was an important source of income for the federal government back in the 1790s. But many farmers refused to pay the tax. They even committed violence against the federal tax collectors, setting off what has come to be called the Whiskey Rebellion. Dude, look at these dorks. To put an end to the... I mean, our, probably, our ancestors were a bunch of dorks. I mean, these are just a bunch of ancestor cosplayers, Shh. dude. Let me have my fucking dream of this being a window in time, <laughs> TJ. It's not. Don't destroy every delusion I have, okay? Some of them are very useful to and me. And you know what? Even if this was a window through time, they might look like dorks, but they look less dorky than people in the 80s. I don't know. That fat dude over there on the left in the baby blue shirt the fat guy standing there i don't know i'd rather be the dude Paul, from flock of seagulls than that guy let's, let's be I don't honest know, dude the people in 1794 they were actually doing this shit were a bunch of fit ass fucking farmers like salt of the earth people fucking covered in fucking yeah, dirt you're right. with their fucking rifles and all like Government try to give me fucking pay tax. Fuck see, the government. See, but Scotty explained it to me like a man, and now I understand. TJ tried to come at me all sideways like a woman. Yeah, TJ's a fucking bitch, dude. Okay. I haven't even seen him you take a what, single TJ? sip of his fucking moonshine since yes, this shit have. started. No, not the, except for the, the one I forced ass, you to. There you go. Sip of moonshine. It's all like, right. man, you're gonna right. like. Hold how- on, I need to fix my volume. I'm way. Low. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. God damn you, TJ. Test, test, test. God oh, fucking shit, damn you. Fucking TJ, dude. Test, 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 test. All right, that seems more <clears throat> reasonable. Okay. Fuck you, faggots. Whatever. So I, I don't even know how you're Actually, actually, actually turn it back down when you were lower than us, dude. No. You're just garbage, TJ. I should just turn you guys way the fuck down. <laughs> turn me way the fuck up. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and actually talk, TJ. Go ahead. I'll shut up. Go ahead. Go ahead. What? Go ahead. What? Go ahead. What? Go ahead, TJ. Go ahead. Go ahead, We're TJ. We're shutting up. We're shutting up. All right. So hold on. Let me just let me just in response to what Paul said, just take take a look at this shit. Okay. I mean, <laughs> uh, okay, that is you know, pretty gay. That is you know what I'm saying? Evidence. I mean, I think I have a point here. I mean, okay, all right. Okay, okay, I but you know what? The point. I, early I, maybe, 90s. Maybe I did dude, come from early 90s like too, a though. bitch. Pull up early not, TJ. Every once in a while, a bitch got a point, dude. That is dude. true. That is true. Pull up the early What's 90s. Up? Tell me the early 90s were any better. Early 90s? All right. I they looked just like fucking like dorks, dude. And the. Like just every, like without the parachute like I'll go pants. back and see 90s advertisements for kids and shit. It's like a video game or something. I'm like, what the fuck? Why do people dress like this? It really is bad. It took a while before people... Like, you know when it started being okay was like in the mid-90s when like baggy jeans yes. and like flannels and shit no, like that. No, the I'm, 90s you know. at the end recovered. The 90s at the end recovered. Yeah. 
We had some cool shit come out All then. Right, so here's like some uh, early 90s shit. Yeah, see, that's just like high-waisted Christian look that everybody <laughs> yeah, was dude. going for. They look bad. Dude, they l- chill how the kids were dressing, dude. Kids were dressing fucking retarded then. I mean, it's not that easy to find. All right. There's like vet. They were like a lot put of like, vests and like shit. like 90s Nintendo ad or something. Like there were vests. I remember kids were wearing like vests over their <laughs> t-shirts and shit. Yeah, dude. All right, so here's some 90s kids clothes. Yeah. Then we're going to get back to the topic of Prohibition. This is the topic. Ugh. Dude, Look at terrible, that. man. Look at that insanity, dude. I mean, that may be, that may be like not real super early ni- 90s. That may be like a little into because it's baggy at least. Like the the early '90s was more like that first picture you showed with the high waisted jeans. <laughs> it's just terrible, dude. But anyway, we were talking about what now? Prohibition. <coughs> the whiskey Prohibition. rebellion. We're talking about the whiskey dude. rebellion. Let's yeah. take a look at this. Rebellion. President Washington sent fifteen thousand U.S. troops into the region. Yeah. This large show of force soon convinced the farmers to pay the taxes. Pay the fucking tax, and bitch. The rebels it's also so gangster, dude. He just showed up with 15,000 dudes, and he was like, listen. And he's probably real nice about it, too. He's like, listen, you're going to pay the tax. You're going to pay the tax. Do you see that camp dude, back Deckard there? That's 15,000 like, people. Stay a while and pay your taxes. Oh, yeah, that's how I think he sounded. I think he sounded a lot like, uh, like uh, Deckard Cain. What if he? What if George Washington had a totally faggoty voice, dude? He was like, "Guys, hello, it's me, Georgie, <coughs> your president, and I'm sorry to tell you, but you're totally encircled. You're totally encircled right now. There are fifteen thousand mean hombres, okay? They're getting ready to charge into the valley and sack your little Pennsylvania town if you don't pay the tax. I like that would it. be pretty sweet." Dude, yeah, that'd be fucking. That's that'd be a strange new twist shit. on Washington. Yep. <coughs> but yeah, he made him sign this fucking declaration of allegiance. Like, you gotta fucking say you you fucking are gonna listen to what we tell you, or we're gonna bring this army back around. Yeah, this is the and cuck, so by taking the cuck contract here. Action against the whiskey rebellion. The American government made it clear that it would not tolerate activities that violated national laws. So this was basically so a this founding. Was basically, this was like really the the federal government's big assertion of power over the populace. Yeah, it was like, look, states' rights are fine, but when it comes to the federal government making laws and <laughs> levying taxes, you're going to pay them, or well, you're going to be crushed. Washington, as TJ just watched this series, uh, the John Adams thing. Washington went a lot more with the Hamilton philosophy, the Alexander Hamilton, the Federalist philosophy. Like oh, he yeah. wasn't he didn't have a, an official political party, but he definitely leaned more in that direction. Right. Well so I mean, it was I a think way that, more that action kind of just demonstrates militaristic, it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that action really demonstrates that they basically go and they fucking they don't use the carrot, they use the stick. They say, Look, we understand you guys wanted to be free. Now you're fucking free. Free to listen to us, bitches. Well, I mean, it, it, think about who they elected, though. The the country basically unanimously elected George Washington, who up until that point was a soldier. Yeah. So it's just like... We essentially at that time had a military dictatorship, yeah. dude. Yep. We really did. We really did. He rode at the head of that army. <clears throat> think about... Just think about Donald Trump riding a horse at the head of the cavalry or whatever the fuck to go talk to somebody like you know what i mean it takes a kind of special kind of president to feel like he needs to be there personally so let's fast forward uh 40 years or so right uh this is under a section called the american family so this was really what drove prohibition so by 1830 the average american over 15 years of age uh, consumed nearly seven gallons of pure alcohol a year. Jesus, dude. Three times as much as the average American drinks today. And alcohol abuse, in parentheses it says primarily by men, was wreaking havoc on the lives of many, particularly in an age when women had few legal rights and were utterly dependent on their husbands for sustenance and support. So basically, you know, you're reliant on your husband to take care of you if you're a woman. Yes. And your husband is a fucking drunk piece of shit. Right. Well, that here's the thing. He's way he was, more likely to come home and beat you than to, you know, give you the things you actually need. But here's the story. And yeah. here's how it would always unfold in these homes. Because nobody would get with a drunk 
no good for nothing jobless piece of shit the men didn't start that way this was when alcoholism first started to really assert itself as a as a social problem right because these women would marry these hard-working men they would homestead with them start a family with them and then these men would get stressed out by their ever increasing you know job uh requirements I mean, the whole, taking care of the whole family is on their shoulders all right. the shit and they would end up going to the saloon to blow off steam every once in a while. And they liked that so much that every once in a while became once a week. And then you pile on top of that that it was just customary for people to drink at this time all throughout the day. <clears throat> right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, like, people were drunk at one work. Of the, I mean, like, you know. <laughs> one of the things they talk about in that Ken Burns documentary that Scotty mentioned um, was, is that it was very customary for people to have a barrel of like apple, apple uh, brandy just by their door, just homemade apple brandy. <coughs> and you would get a ladle of it when you came over to somebody's house. It was just like a, hey, welcome to our place. And you'd get a ladle of it when you left in the morning to go to work and drink that to warm you up on your way to work. So it was a very culturally acceptable thing to drink in a way that it really isn't now. Well, think about how much safer it is, too, because, I mean, this is before modern plumbing. This is before a lot of disease theories even now. And so people don't even really... Medical care is very basic. Dysentery, cholera, they have all these diseases. Oh, not only that, but, but in the But when you boil the water, it makes it safer. Lots, yeah, it's actually, it's actually safer. Right. So, so what that led to is a bunch of medical people prescribing alcohol as medicine. And it was very common for you to go in and be like, oh, I've got an ache and a pain. And it might be appendicitis, but the doctor would just be like, here, <laughs> drink this whiskey. Take three slugs of it every hour, you know what I mean, or whatever the fuck. And um, so it was looked at as a benefit to society. But what it led to is a story that we're all too familiar to in the modern age, which is a husband that spends more and more time at the bar, spends more and more of his money doing frivolous shit that only drunk people do, like gambling away his paycheck on shit or just spending it all on booze and bitches at the bar and then coming home drunk and angry and abusive because his family is like a representation of all the shit that he's just spent. And he beats the shit out of his wife and he beats his children and it cr creates this terrible environment. But it's a time where women can't go to the constable and be like, my, my husband's baiting me. Because at this time it was like a husband's right to beat the shit out of you. It's like, good, you should have beat your ass yeah. sooner. You know? Yeah. What do you mean? He's beating his <laughs> wife and kids? Oh, so well, he's a man? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> plus you have a very biblical perspective then too. It's like the, the Bible is taken a lot more seriously. So it's like, no, it's in the Bible. You should obey. You're his property, basically. Uh, so this kind of problem, the situation led the country to its first serious anti-alcohol movements. Um, and out of the fervor for reform that swept the nation in the 1830s and 1840s, many abolitionists fighting to rid the country of slavery came to see drink as an equally great evil to be eradicated. If America yeah, were ever to be fully cleansed of sin, the temperance movement rooted, rooted in uh, the American Protestant churches first urged moderation, then encouraged drinkers to help each other to resist temptation, and ultimately demanded that local, state, and national governments prohibit alcohol outright. You know what? Every time, they're not going to prohibit alcohol. Prohibit means we take a swig. Prohibit. Don't fucking stop the goddamn people of the United States of goddamn America from drinking, dude. Not on my watch. <laughs> God-given fucking, God fucking on right. My watch I don't believe in God, but he still gave it to me. Yeah. Like goddamn fucking. So uh, here's a, a thing called the Drunkard's Progress. This is from a pamphlet <laughs> distributed by the Temperance movement around the time uh, that we're talking about in this article the 18 uh, the 40s and shit okay so um let's see step one a glass with a friend you know sure he's looking pretty dapper there yep having now a good he's time even more sophisticated a, yep a glass to keep the the let out is that what that says yeah it's like you know a glass to kind of get a pick me up when he's feeling oh, yeah, down I get the let out dude. step three a glass too much then oh, he starts shit, getting dude. drunk. He's to look like a kind of a <coughs> fucking slouchy prick there. Right. Step four, drunk and... Um, I can't read that other word, but I'm assuming it's some sort of pejorative. Belligerent, dude. He's fucking He's belligerent. fighting some other dude and shit. Right. Still kind of looks happy, though. <laughs> What's happy at the top of the pyramid? Step five, the summit attained. Um, Jolly... Jolly companions, a confirmed drunkard. So it's starting to get good again. <laughs> right. It's so fun. It's partying. Right. Step six, <laughs> poverty and 
Disease. Disease. Wow. Uh, step seven. Forsaken, forsaken by friends. That's so what's friends now. just d- dump you. So all these people that were drinking with you before, I mean, assuming they'd be in the same place as you by now, right? So nah, they dude, they, still be your friends. I don't know. They, yep. they, they stopped the drink, dude. You kept going. Uh, the next one is desperation and crime. And step nine is death by suicide. He's shooting himself yeah. in the fucking what? head. Yeah. I mean, it gets... <laughs> And look, oh my God. and this whole process here, look at what's on. It feels like I'm watching the room, dude. His weeping wife and fucking child who yep. no longer has a father because he drank. He went through the fucking nine steps of the fucking drunkard, the drunkard's progress. Right. Which led him from a respectable gentleman to, <laughs> to a suicidal suicide. criminal hobo. Dude, this is why drug propaganda never works, dude. Because the average person sees this shit and it's like. You're having a cool. You're having a drink with your buddy. It's cool to like. You're blowing your fucking brains out. Yeah. You're homeless. You're destitute. You're a criminal, and you're blowing your fucking head off. <laughs> yep. No bullshit. This is where booze has led. No, you, you. know what booze leads you if you're that fucking down low. You're taking that gun. You're robbing somebody to buy more fucking booze. Well, that dude. came before, dude. He remember he already was resorting to crime <laughs> earlier. Dude. Yeah. Well, Poverty and disease. And then you end up in jail. You end up dead. Come on, he doesn't end up blowing his fucking brains out. I mean, a lot of people do, though. And back then, it was the same. You know, like, suicide was a, a real problem back then as it, end, dude, as it fucking, is now. Dude, you know what? Me and she didn't know someone that committed suicide by alcohol. Yeah, well, we, we, we did. There's this fucking guy named JD who, no shit, lived under our fucking parents' house for, like, ten years off and on. Yeah. The guy was a total fucking alcoholic. Pretty much since I we I, I fuck I met him when I was thirteen. He died a couple years ago from uh, cirrhosis of the liver because he so yeah himself down. the slow suicide yeah the slow suicide. It was crazy because everyone would talk to him be like, man, why don't you stop drinking? And, you know he'd always say he's like, man, it's like my pain. I have so much pain. It's like no, dude, you're just fucking addicted. I saw this guy actually quit. He only drinking. got to step six before he died. Though. Yeah, dude, poverty and disease. The stage. craziest that I've ever seen with a person that was deprived of alcohol was I saw him going down the street on a bike. And he'd gone to rehab, so like, because if you if you're a serious alcoholic, you have to go to like a medical facility because you'll die otherwise. Right. You'll literally die from withdrawal. So he did that. And he was going, and you couldn't. He was going to buy booze, and he was doing like literally like this. Like he was seizing up because he was like he had he was so desperate because he fucking, tried to cold turkey it. Yeah, for a fucking drink, he was just like shaking uncontrollably, and and, and he's did it for years. See, people and, like that just need to go into treatment so that they can be brought down safely. Oh, he did several times. It just didn't matter. Like he just drank himself to death. <laughs> And then one fucking day, they went down to check on him, like, hey, you want some dinner? And he was stiff as a fucking board. Well, there it is. And he, and, and, and he just fucking said, oh, dude, the whole time, like, you go to the doctor, I remember, I remember he like, told me, he looked me dead in my eye, and it's like, you know what? Doctor said my liver's fine. I'm like, I just looked at him, I'm like, there's no, fu-. I just told him, like, there's no fucking way, dude. No doctor told you I'm like, dude, if, I'm like, show me the fucking piece of paper that says your liver is good. Doesn't so, happen. So I can understand what I'm saying, the whole point of this, I can understand where people are coming from with this, like, the drink is going to ruin your life. I've seen it ruin people's lives before. Well, it's a real connection with our ancestors that were alive at this time because it was a problem for them and it's still a problem for us. Oh, yeah, dude. It totally A is. ton of families, you know. Although it's definitely a worse problem for them where people are, on average, oh, a- average seven gallons fun. of alcohol. Dude, people I mean, on yeah. average are drunk. Or not a day, obviously, but, you know. Well, also, I mean, look, a lot less people worked. I mean, people didn't work as much back then. Even though, yeah, I know it's like they worked harder. They worked these hard labor jobs. You know, a lot of people at that time were worked, basically lived on farms. They worked on farms, like family farms or someone else's farm. Subsistence farming. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean... At the end of the day, it's like, let's get plastered, you know? Why the fuck not? What the fuck like, else you have to do? Yeah, you know, like there's, it's not like shit now we have distractions. Like, I'm going to go play God of fucking War. I'm going to go jerk off to a million different porn sites. I'm going to go fucking spelunking. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm going to go pick the banjo. And you know, you can actually do a bunch of cool shit Back then, what the fuck do you have to do? You're illiterate. There's no fucking such thing as TV. There's no internet. Because think about us three fucks. We'd just be a bunch of illiterate fucks, probably, and just be like, That's "What you when go- it's time to drink. Yeah, what do you want to do? Let's drink. Drinking makes me an illiterate fuck. <laughs> ah. So whatever, man. I, I fucking get it, man. I get why they drank, and I get why people didn't want them but to drink. But it was also destroying the family unit as it worked back then. Because back oh, yeah. then, like, even now, it's, a, it's not as bad because women are kind of expected even to work now. This All whole right. stay-at-home mom shit is on the out. Back so, then, it was the only option most women had was marry a man who had a good enough job to support a household and raise a family. Yeah. So this is uh, Lyman Beecher. Yep. 
And is that a man or is that a fucking real ugly bitch? That is a man. Tell. That's okay. a man, dude. The That's American, a real man. It's a DJ. man, baby. I don't. Okay. The American Temperance Society. It's oh, fuck this ATS, dude. dude. <laughs> Boo. S- STD. Also known as the American Society for the Promotion of Temperance. Temperance. It's established on Brighton. February 13th, 1826 over in Boston. Boston. Uh, within five years, there were 2,220 local chapters in the oh, U.S. Oh, fuck that shit, dude. So this thing took on... This Read took how off many like people. Crazy. Read how many people. Yeah, with over 170,000 members. Now, what was even the population of the country in 1826? That's what I'm saying. That's oh, a staggering dude. number was of it people. Like, what was it, like 20 million people or something? Some shit like that? It caught on like wildfire, dude. Now, they they, they, they had uh, that 170,000 people, all of them made a pledge to abstain from drinking distilled beverages, okay? Mm-hmm. Within 10 years... There were over 8,000 local groups, and there was 1,250,000 members who had taken wow. this pledge. So this fucking movement was growing like wildfire. It was huge. I mean, a, a, a movement with 1,250,000 people in it today is huge. Yeah, so imagine it in 1826 when the population is a, f- a fucking fraction of what it is now. Right. So uh, the society benefited from and contributed to a reform sentiment in much of the country, promoting the abolition of slavery, expanding women's rights, temperament, temperance, and the improvement of society. Possibly because of its association with the abolitionist movement, the society was mostly it was mostly most successful in uh, northern states. Probably also because Southerners probably liked their drink a little bit like, more. Fuck these Yankee fuck. Let's get drunk. Uh, the prohibition movement. Also known as the Dry Crusade, continued in the 1840s. Fuck the dries. Spearheaded by uh, pietistic religious denominations, especially the Methodists. Fucking religion, dude. Ruin everything. The late 19th century saw the temperance movement broaden its focus from abstinence to include all behavior and institutions related to alcohol consumption. So, did you read what my little nickname I gave this guy? Uh... Founder of the American Temperance Society. I don't see any sort of nickname. like it, like like w- at the header of his thing. Uh, all it says is Lyman Beecher, founder of the American okay, Temperance right. Society. Well, everybody else in this story, I gave a little nickname, and some of them are actually nicknames that they were given at the time, and then I made up the other ones. Okay, it's a part of the story, TJ. It's well, part you, of the story. You TJ. didn't write it on this one. Well, I forgot to do it for Lyman fucking Beecher. So, what's your nickname for Lyman Beecher? Um. The 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 father of the dry movement. Okay. Daddy Dry. Daddy Dry. <laughs> Daddy, I'm dry. It's a weird nickname, but okay. <laughs> Why? I mean, this not? guy was ultimately responsible for fucking prohibition. I mean, I mean, well, yeah, he started the first <laughs> he, he, big movement. He's the catalyst, so. dude. So this next motherfucker we want to talk about. Let's take a sh- let's drink first. Yeah, let's drink. Take a swig. Swig, and, swig, swig. Hold on. Swig Can you guys vamp for a second? I got to piss. Sorry, when I drink, I got to pee. Don't and piss, I'm just, Paul. I got to pee. Don't piss. Don't get pissed, Paul. Just, well, Paul, you guys Paul. can move on. Go ahead. Paul's Don't pissed, piss, dude. Paul. Paul. I have to pee. Don't pee, dude. Don't pee, Paul. What do you want me to do, TJ? There's two I many I want you people. to not pee. I want you to hold it like a man, Paul. <laughs> but then I'm just going to be sitting there. Bombing God, dude. All night. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Bob your fucking leg, dude. Bob your leg, then. Look, guys. Yeah. Tell Paul, an embarrassing story about Let Paul. me just tell you something, guys. Paul is a faggot, dude. I'm going to tell you a story about Paul last night. So I hear this knock at my door. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck is Paul? It's got to be Paul. It's got to be a Paul or Ashley. What the fuck's going on? It was like four in the morning. I'm sitting there sleeping. Chelsea's Paul, sleeping. Dude. Yeah, and then Paul's standing there. And he's like, yo, yo, TJ, man. Just one time, I just gotta know what it's like. Suck your dick, nigga. Oh my god. Just gotta suck your dick one time, TJ. That's what happened. And I'm like, dude, Chelsea's here. You know, let's talk about this later. Come on. You know, so that's that's the story of how Paul really is. <clears throat> I heard a different version from Paul, dude. Oh, what what Paul say? Okay, so Paul's up there at 4 a.m. He's just chilling about. Man, I'm about to do a high ideology. Tap 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 on the fucking door, and Paul's all like. Is it? This gotta be fucking TJ or Chelsea, and he's like, probably TJ forgot some up here or some shit. So you stroll in, wearing a pair of short shorts and a tank top, <coughs> and you just go, Paul, <coughs> Paul, I got to know, my man, I got to know what it's like <coughs> to be inside you, man. 
And Paul's like, whoa, TJ. <laughs> TJ, quick call. Quick call into the fucking mic. We fucking work together, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is unprofessional, Crazy TJ. fuck, dude. And then he said you got really mad and you slammed your fist down and be like, passing up a good fucking thing, Paul. And you stormed down the stairs, dude. Well, that's not exactly how it really ended, though. It ended with me stripping those little booty shorts off him and him fucking his rump, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, you know, I thought we weren't going to tell him about that. <laughs> Oops. I thought we were Whoa. keeping that between And then us. I slapped him on the ass and sent him scurrying downstairs. <laughs> like, now you know what it's like. Now you know what it's like, boy. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Two, Revelations here. Two on. minutes in paradise, right? Who else unironically pissing in a bottle at the moment, says Yoda Pez Dispenser. I want a Yoda Pez dispenser. Yeah, Paul should just piss in a bottle. Pissing <coughs> in a bottle. Man, my fucking head hurts, dude. Dude, it's moonshine horrible. fucking... It, it was hurting before I even started Oh, drinking. God, dude, you're fucked. Dude, your head hurt before. I know, it's going to be fucking horrible. Oh, you're in trouble, TJ. Mm. This is going to... This is not going to be... going to destroy you. Who's next on our roster of villains? So... Well, I guess villains and heroes. Whatever. This is a guy named fucking <coughs> Neil Dow. Or as Neil. Paul has dubbed him, or maybe someone else did, the Napoleon of Temperance. No, that's actually somebody else gave him that. This is this fucker. This is the Napoleon of Temperance, Neil Dow. He's got one of the best pictures of anybody I pulled. Like, he had a really professional picture made of him. Yeah, it does. it's pretty good detail for the time period. Um, Neil Dow, born March 20th, 1804. Died October 2nd, 1897. Lived a long life, too. Yeah, he was a, uh, he's a crusty old fuck. He was an American prohibition advocate and politician, nicknamed the Napoleon of Temperance and the father of prohibition. Dow was born to a Quaker family ugh, in Portland, Maine. From a young age, he believed alcohol to be the cause of many of society's problems and sought to ban it through legislation. In 1850, Dow was elected president of the Maine Temperance Union, and the next year was elected the mayor of Portland. Soon after, largely due to Dow's efforts, the state legislature banned the sale and production of alcohol in what became known as the Maine Law. So he actually was one of the, he was the first person to successfully pass prohibition legislation, I think. Yep. He did, serving he was, twice. He, he kicked the door open to prohibition on a national scale. Serving twice as mayor of Portland, Dow enforced the law with vigor and called for increasingly harsh penalties for violators. In 1855, his opponents rioted and he ordered the state militia to fire on the crowd. One man was killed and several wounded. And when public reaction to the violence turned against Dow, he chose not to seek re-election. <laughs> well, that's prick. like, well, that's like you know all this fervor behind, like, yeah, drink is the cause of all these problems, and it's like people are protesting, kill them. Yeah. Then it's just like, whoa, this is a tyrannical government at this point. Like they're literally forcing us not to drink and then killing us if we protested. His career was not over there, though. He was later elected to two terms in the Maine House of Representatives. He retired after a financial scandal. What a prick. He joined the Union Army shortly after the outbreak of the American Civil War in 1861, eventually attaining the rank of Brigadier General. He was wounded at the siege of Port Hudson and later captured after being exchanged for another officer in 1864. Dow resigned from the military and devoted himself once more to prohibition. He spoke across the United States, Canada, and Great Britain in support of the cause. In 1880, Dow headed the Prohibition Party ticket for President of the United States. So these motherfuckers had a party. Yeah. I mean, this is a big deal. After and losing dude, the election, oh, go ahead. he continued to write and speak on the behalf of the Prohibition Movement for the rest of his life until his death in Portland at the age of 93. So he, lit, he, was, he basically dedicated his entire long-ass 93-year life <clears throat> to as, Prohibition. To bro, to, yeah, to Prohibition. And made <clears throat> great strides towards making it happen. Got the first law ever passed, you know, that prohibited alcohol mm -hmm. and uh, enforced <laughs> it. So, so really gave a, a template. Fag, just a general all around faggot. I but mean, he, so, yeah. so, I mean, if you look at this, this was, a, this was like hundreds of years in the making to really get this sort of constitutional amendment passed that ultimately bans the sale of alcohol, which we know it was ineffectual. It didn't really work. I right. mean, people were drinking like crazy still during prohibition. Even or, more than they did before. Yeah. You like know, as in, as if in open defiance of the law, but we'll get to that. I'm sure. Yeah, we'll get to that. But 
I'm just saying that. So that th- these are basically the people that kind of were instrumental in, the, in prohibition coming about. Like I said, he banned it in the state of Maine. Right. And that's kind of crazy in itself because I didn't even really realize that. I didn't realize. I mean, I, I realized obviously the states had to ratify the amendment, but at the same time, I, I didn't actually know individual states had banned alcohol. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Well, they did. They did. Well, yeah, well, they did. Well, you didn't know no, inside Philip Philip Barnes, TV. Scotty. Dude, you should fucking Queer go back to Page Boy bitch. TJ, dude. What I do? Page Boy TJ. Dude. Page Boy TJ <laughs> is my favorite TJ. Dude, dude, I have long hair now, too, TJ. Come on, dude. Fucking go back to Page Boy TJ. Embrace it. Page Boy. Page Boy. Page <laughs> Boy. Don't you, page don't, you, boy. don't you feel that inside, though? Isn't that what you really are, TJ? It's Page Boy TJ. That's the real TJ. Every, Where's my squire? Dude, the fucking... There was a divergence in timelines, dude. You're actually just Page Boy TJ still. That's all you are, dude. Nope. You are. <laughs> nope, TJ, you nope, are. Nope, nope, TJ, nope. just look at yourself and embrace the fucking truth. TJ, Let you, me tell you something, Scotty. Nah. Tell me that you're Page nah. Boy TJ. Nah, dog. Nah. nah. Look at this bitch. Oh, this is God, awesome. God, this, this bitch looks like a fucking cunt, dude. Let me, she is. <laughs> oh, she's a royal cunt. <laughs> I kind of like her, but yeah, she is she's a pretty awesome. bitch. Oh, she is? Well, cool. Well, I mean... I don't, doesn't mean I dislike her. She just looks like a cunt. She's, no, she's a total cunt, and she's horrible, and I oppose her, but I also like her. Yeah. She began, this is Carrie Na- uh, Nation, the hatchet lady. And there she is holding the fucking hatchet. This is a crazy ass bitch. She uh, started her temperance work in uh, Medicine Lodge by starting a local branch of the Women's Christian Temperance Union and campaigning for the enforcement of Can- uh, a Kansas state ban on, on liquor. Her methods escalated from simple protests to serenading saloon patrons with hymns accompanied by a hand organ to uh, greeting bartenders with pointed remarks such as, Good morning, destroyer of men's souls. (laughs) That's beautiful, dude. Wow. She also helped her mother and her daughter who had mental (laughs) problems. It says citation needed, so maybe that's bullshit. Yeah, who knows? So she's not she's not happy with the results of her efforts, dude. So not on at all. June fifth, nineteen hundred, she basically she prays, okay, and she hears God or an angel or some bullshit, right? Tell her that she's got to go to Kiowa, some town, I guess, in Kansas. Yeah, and uh, God's like, I'll stand by you. Go to Kiowa. And um, she goes to the fucking town, right? The uh, She takes a fucking axe and a bunch of rocks and shit. Yeah. And she fucking gathers a bunch of people together. Smashers, she calls them. She proceeded to Dobson's Saloon, June 7th, 1900. Announces, Men... I have come to save you from a drunkard's fate. And she begins, she just destroys the fucking saloon, basically. Right. She just smashes the fucking place Starts up. Starts throwing the rocks, smashing bottles. And, like, you got to r- realize, like, at this time, if a crazy la- old lady comes and does this, you can't really do anything. Yeah, you're not allowed to go tackle an old bitch. And you don't even know, you, like, I, I was, this was in the Ken Burns documentary. And they're basically, like, people didn't even know what to fucking do. It was so outside of like the realm of what people even considered possible to happen that they just no one even reacted to it except to just stare on in awe. Right. So she destroys two other saloons in Kiowa. And after that, a, a tornado hits eastern Kansas, and she views this tornado as divine approval. Of her actions. Sweet. God's like, yeah, I'll help you destroy it. Doesn't a lot of this just boil down to superstitious dumbasses who are ascribing all social ills to one thing? Yes. It's just something that, like, like, look, people drink a lot, therefore, because they're drinking a lot, all the problems in our society are being, you know, it's just scapegoating alcohol. Yeah. Look, I, and I, look, I'm sure alcohol contributed to these problems, but a lot of the social problems were, it just goes to show you were inherited have always in, in, that, in our culture. For bullshit, like, yeah. you know, how many people blame immigrants or some shit? Oh, the know? opioid crisis, the immigrants. Oh, this happened or this happened. Yeah. But you know what, dude? You got to give Carry Nation props on one thing. Yeah. Unlike Wayne Wheeler and the other dork we've covered, 
she had the balls to, to like go do something about it. You know what I mean? She was like, well, you know what? Fuck it. This whole like talking thing is not getting anywhere. So I'm just going to go smash up some saloons. And she <laughs> yeah, done did it. I respect it, dude. That's why I said I like her. Yeah, you can't help but like her. I well, think I pulled a video about what her. What was your fucking saloon, TJ? Check it out. I think it might like be from the Burns documentary. It's some cool. excerpt. Oh, okay, Nothing cool. so needs reforming as other people say. I'm going to boost this a little. Fanatics will never learn that, though it be written in letters of gold across the sky. It is the prohibition that makes anything precious. Amen. Mark Twain. Smart man. The only way to solve the problem of drunkenness many believed was to get rid of the saloon. Dude, I love Ken Burns documentaries. Oh, me too. You could skip ahead a little bit in this. All right. When I went to Medicine Lodge... Well, actually, no. Just let it go. There were seven dives where drinks were sold. Seven dives. I began to ask why should we have the saloon when Kansas was a prohibition state. And our constitution made it a crime to manufacture, barter, sell, or give away intoxicating drinks. These dive keepers really were not as much to blame as the city officials who were in league with this lawless element. And could see the wicked walking on every side and the vilest men exalted. Carry Nation. Carry Nation's life was Crazy filled with Crazy ass tragedy. bitch. Her mother died in an insane asylum, convinced she was Queen Victoria. <laughs> whoa. You know, I think crazy might run. In the I am the Queen bit, of though. England. It's like, whoa. She might have had a little touch of mom. Her first husband drank himself to death. Damn. A second unhappy marriage would end in divorce. She determined to give herself over to the struggle against what she called the place where the serpent drink crushed the hopes of my early years the saloon mm. kansas had already banned the sale of alcohol in every one it's of like its i feel like a lot of times counties. with a shit like this though the, isn't it really just trying to regulate human behavior it's like oh it is people want sure. social interaction if there's not a saloon people are going to gather somewhere there's going to be people like i want to interact with other humans that i don't necessarily know i want to have this fucking experience yeah I, I and just, all alcohol was at that point was it was just social lubrication like we drink and then we have fun so i said carry nation sounds like a redneck slogan carry nation it sure does it kind of does but she was kind of a <laughs> redneck warrior that's why they fucking. That's why this shit with prohibition on any drug doesn't work. We, we have prohibition of so uh, many drugs still today, and it's just it's stupid. It both of her marriages fucking... went downhill. She's the common denominator. So, I mean, it's only two. Well, examples. she lost the first husband to fucking drink. It yeah, was he. He went out and probably party. Well, maybe and he, he drank himself to death because he was married to Carrie Nation. Maybe. Though. Yeah. Well, you can't know. really blame. Him. She wasn't a looker. She wasn't a. She didn't sound like she had like a very winning personality either. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Maybe we know why you drink. I don't know. Some death. men like to be dominated, dude. Uh, sure. She P- would have been. Punish me, Carrie Nation. Punish yeah. Me. Get that hatchet out, baby. Break my bottles. <clears throat> Break them. Break them in half. Anyway, I think this one is pretty long. It is. So we don't have to watch all of it. We, you can skip ahead a little bit and see if you can see something about the destruction of. Yeah. Of the saloon. The saloon. Yeah, right there is a good place to start. Right here. Uh, go back a little bit. A little, yeah. little bit more, oh, a little, wait, bit, more, on, a little yeah. bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Hi, guys. Uh, once again, it's TJ uh, in the present. And uh, this section of the video had to be cut because, unfortunately, it met with a visual content, uh, vis- audio visual content ID match from PBS. Uh, isn't that supposed to be public broadcasting? Shouldn't I have the right to do that? Whatever. I don't, I guess. So this part's cut, but it talked about a crazy bitch, uh, crazy feminist bitch from back in the day who uh, used to smash up liquor stores with a um, with a hammer or whatever she had at her disposal. So uh, not liquor stores, bars. She'd go to the bar and smash it up uh, to stop men from drinking. So that's what that's what we're reacting to. Will save the boy. So she that's a that's a good spot to, to stop. Arrest. It yeah. just gives you kind of an idea of her mindset. I like her conviction. I hate her conviction. It's just totally misguided though, because let's say let's say that that boy he's talking about like <laughs> he's happy. He's like maybe my dad's gonna stop being a prick that drinks every day. 
But he's still going to be drinking. He should have drink at his buddy's house. He should drink on the street. Yep. You're not going to stop the behavior. You're just going to change the, the way that where the behavior is experienced. Yeah, maybe. And I, I'm sure, like, look, of course, prohibition. Some people will not drink. Maybe, maybe less people will get addicted to the alcohol. Sure. But if someone's already an alcoholic, they're not going to stop suddenly because the, their fucking favorite saloon got shut down. They're just going to go, oh, shit, I got to go somewhere else. A drink for Carrie Nation, fellas. For Carrie Nation, dude. Her heart was in the right place. Her methods were in the Actually, wrong should, place. Yeah, we, should, we should fucking. We should eat one of those. We should fucking get a thing. To get, eat some of those cherries, dude. Oh, we can, yeah. Get, I'm gonna we're getting down to them. So. I'm going to snack a spoon so we can eat some. You yeah. down to eat some, TJ? Okay. S- some fucking. Some moonshine cherries. So destroying property akin to theft is okay. Why are you criticizing this ancient bitch? Yeah, dude. What? Why are you like being such a fucking great? Like she's moral not here to hear here. your fucking argument. You know what I'm saying? She's an old bitch that had some balls, dude. How, how often do you hear about somebody who talks shit about prohibiting something? Actually, you know what, balls. Paul? Truth is fucking truth, dude. If you want the fucking truth, Paul, then you just can't handle it, buddy. Game recognize game, Scotty. Game recognize game, Scotty. Lame recognize lame. I didn't even say nothing. Whoa. Light you on fire, dude. Ow. Whoa, there's a there's combat going on already. Hey, don't t- don't steal my lighter. Hey, hat. give me my hat. Fuck your hat, bitch. God damn it. Oh shit, he just stomped his hat. Hat, He's fucked you up. Taking my hat back. Wow. <clears throat> the moonshine has started to kick in, folks. Ugh. I'm feeling a little woozy. Like I've been sitting too long in a jacuzzi. Just some little beezy lyrics. With three or four floozies. <laughs> Paul can rap if it's real slow. Yeah. Yeah. I just need rap to slow down. Yes. I mean, maybe that'll be the next thing. Slow rap. You can I can call rap. It slam poetry. I can rap fast if it's somebody else's lyrics. Well, I'm talking about freestyling. But yeah, freestyling, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, I never, I'm not good at that shit. <clears throat> it hard. What are we talking about? Prohibition. Prohibition. We're talking about Mary Hatchet, I guess. No, that was Carrie Nation. Hanchet. Mary Hanchet. Mary Hanchet Hunt. Mary Hanchet Hunt. The teacher. Oh, yeah. Le teacher. Whatever. The teacher. I don't know. She, here, here's stupid is, bitch. Yep. She looks like a vampire. <laughs> she does. <laughs> she doesn't she? She looks like a fucking vampire. She really does. She looks like... And she's got man hands, too. Yeah, she looks like she'd, like, summon you forth with one of her weird monkey hands. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, come here, my pretty. And then it's like, you know, she's dr- drinking on your neck from a bendy straw, dude. Yeah. Oh, we doing this? It's here. It's empty. Oh, she wants a pan colada now? Uh, get, I want ice. Right, I'm a, I can go get it if you want. I don't. I'm already up anyways. All right. I'll get the fucking cherries. My camera. I already got mine. Oh shit! Let me fucking eat the cherry. Oh my god. Oh shit! Scotty's gonna eat the cherry, dude. Eat the cherry. Mm. Ooh, there oh, you go. Oh, I, yeah. Somehow that's worse than the drink. Well, this cherry pie shit is no joke either, dude. It's not. Ooh, lad. Ooh. All right. Um. Okay, so um, vampire cunt. Yeah. She's called the teacher. She should be called the vampiress, but whatever. <laughs> All right, so when Francis Willard... I guess we should wait for Scotty. Yeah, we'll wait for Scotty. Scotty needs to learn. Yeah, we all have to go on this journey together. This or else. is a journey of all of us as one. Dude, we can't leave Scotty behind on this journey. We've got to sally forth with the him. The never-ending journey. Na, 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 na. Which? Yeah, do you want more cherry or do you want pina colada, TJ? I want to try the pina colada. Do you like pina colada? All right, Scotty, can you see this? Va- look at this vampire bitch, dude. Is this a vampire, dude? Look at her. Fuck yeah, dude. Does she not look like a fucking vampire? Dude, she's a total fucking vampire. <laughs> <laughs> 
her like, name might as well be Draculina, dude. Draculina. <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> oh, that, that's a better nickname than the teacher. All right. Uh, her new name nickname. This for, is a terrible show called Vampirina. Historical dude. posterity is called um, Draculina. Draculina. Mary oh, Hanchet Hunt in quotation marks. Draculina. Did you Draculina? Did you say Mary Anchet Hunt. Hanchet Mary Hunt. Hanchet Hunt. Anchet Hunt. Yes. All right. Mary Ancient Cunt. The Vampirus. <laughs> the fucking vampire. Also known as Draculina. <laughs> vampire Hunter TJ. So, um, anyway, uh, when Francis Willard placed Mary Hanchent Cunt. Mary Ancient Cunt. Mary Ancient Cunt. Very Ancient Cunt. Yeah. In charge of the Women's Christian Temperance Union's Department of Scientific Temperance Institute. Department of Science. <laughs> instruction. What? They Okay, Department of Scientific Temperance Instruction. Yeah, does that sound like any other of these fucking fake ass religious like names for shit? For, oh, yeah. You know what like I mean? Scientology, it's like, dude. Uh, what, what, do they, like, what do they call their fucking shit in schools now? It's not creationism. It's like. Uh, um. Oh. oh yeah, yeah. Creation. That's no, not creation science either. Oh, what they is it called? One. Yeah, they got like a new one for it. Yeah, do they, uh, there's some other fucking. But anyway, you get my drift. I'm no, too I know drunk you're talking about. Yeah, fuck, dude. I, I know you're talking about it though. But yeah, yeah you know what I mean. It's, it's just basically hasn't young changed. earth creationism. Yeah, it hasn't. Yeah. Cha- and this was the chick that wrote the book on that. She released the. F- she was responsible for the first curriculum based around temperance that was taught in schools all over the country. And she was the first one to do that, to like insinuate this obviously religiously backed. I guess they do just call it creation science. Creation science. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. But I mean, how this fucking is even religion, more dude, how religion poisons everything, how it fucking is such a goddamn force of bullshit. World. So um, this was meant to train generations, you know, school kids. Train? You mean train fucking them. brainwash? Train them to be stupid meant pieces of shit. To fucking brainwash yeah, and, uh, gullible fucking kids. And this was pa- this is on the public's dime. Yeah, public but remember, school. remember, it's never adults that want to educate. It's always children. We gotta fucking brainwash these stupid, impressionable little fucks that have no intelligence. Yep. And let's get them to fucking tell our lying. We can't actually make persuasive enough arguments to convince enough adults. We gotta fucking force kids to do it for us. Of course. And uh, this is through the public school system. Yep. And uh, she became one of the most powerful women in the temperance movement, mostly because everyone else was afraid they were gonna, she was going to suck their blood, I guess. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, uh, ancient cunt, lobbied Dude, state you think about it. She's a vampire, right? And Congress, yeah. She's, She's a, a qu- fucking vampire, dude. She wants their blood to be clean, free of alcohol. Here's what she did, though. Maybe listen she got this. drunk on their Hold blood. Hold on, listen to this guy. All right, you're, go ahead. You're going to have a reaction to this. All right, I will. Hunt lobbied state legislators and Congress to require anti-alcohol indoctrination in schools forced textbook publishers to conform to her message uh, and sometimes demanded kickbacks in exchange for her stamp of approval. Fuck this extortionist <laughs> bitch, dude. dude! She was a vampire. We were right. She's a fucking extortionist fuck that basically is all like, God, fucking agree with me, uh, my ideology. Also, give me some fucking money so I fucking leave you alone. She's just a smarter television. It's just a fucking mob, dude. It's just like the, it's just what like a the fucking thing. It's like, you know what, Paul? Uh, you need to go through this course. And you go, I don't really know about that. Though I'm going to get a giant angry mob to come harass you. You know what? I think I'm going to give you some fucking money and tell you to, uh, that I agree with you. Probably intelligent design. Idea. That's the other one they like. Oh, intelligent design. Intelligent design. There, what, was that, yeah. what, what was that one? Intelligent falling or something when they disputed gravity or something? That was a parody, dude. I know, dude. But, but the, you it, know, it, the it, more things change, the more they parody, sound the same to me. To me, it doesn't even feel like a parody, dude. I mean, this shit has I've been... I've seen theists argue about the existence of gravity. But and if you look at the head of all of those types of organizations that are still around, all this fucking creation science bullshit... Moms against bullshit, drunk drunk. You find the same shit. Rackets, cynical people pl- preying on the genuine religious beliefs of people that are too dumb to think for themselves and just raking in the dough. Why, uh, that's why I actually like the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. I'll tell you why I think that's a stupid organization. Who the fuck is actually in favor of drunk driving? It's not like people are going around the, like, you know what, I don't, I don't really just don't care. Every, all the people get affected by drunk driving, it's anyone that's a victim of it. Yeah, and we get it, it's, it's wrong. Like, like honestly, when I see someone get arrested for that shit... It's one of the few times I'm like, cops aren't dicks. Like, yeah, you know what? If you're driving all over the fucking ropes, you're wasted. Yeah, you shouldn't be fucking driving. It makes fucking sense. But no one is fucking pro it. No one's going, you know what? I think that was a good idea. It was really good that you got in your car after you had fucking 10 beers and drove into a fucking light pole. 
you stupid son of a fucking bitch. Yeah. It's all these stupid fucking... And then it's Alcoholics Anonymous where it's like, well, it's actually not your fault. You need to surrender all of your will to a higher power. Now we're going to mandate you go. Or Narcotics Anonymous where it's like, you have the same thing. No responsibility for you. And like they even, and it's like even like they were saying, it's like, oh, we're saving these people. It's always in the auspice of saving somebody. Hey, TJ, I'm gonna fucking save you now. Oh, I didn't. You don't know you need to be fucking saved. Well, my morality says you do, bitch. <laughs> Have a fun fucking day. Let me come smash up your fucking saloon. Cause I'm an angry cunt that's mad that I'm all these problems in my life that I know how to solve. But you know what? I'll solve this problem. Everyone having a good fucking time. What's what they always do in this goddamn country? Having too good of a time. We need to fucking regulate it and break up your fun. <coughs> wow, dude, that Scotty was an is epic. Drunk as fuck, dude. Yeah, dude, I know, dude. I was wondering. You know when, when the fucking like. Super fucking dude. Like, he, here's my impassioned speech. Yeah, dude. Like, he becomes you know, like a you become like a fucking like a almost like a preacher, dude. You're just like, let me tell you something else. God's gonna save you. God's gonna love you. God's gonna keep you warm. God's gonna take care of your bills. God's gonna take care of all those things that are bothering you. Your bad back, God. Your bad heart, God. Your cancer, God. You know what I mean? I'm just like, oh man, dude, Scotty, you missed a calling. I think you could have been a drunk ass fucking. <laughs> secret atheist televangelist that just dr- traveled around the fucking country oh man oh Paul is your back hurt do you oh Paul look at your back yes oh this boy's back hurt so bad boy oh yes. Paul oh Paul save me Paul save me Paul you need to Paul has, hallelujah have you entered hallelujah Jesus entered your soul Paul hallelujah have you been washed in the blood Paul take I'm a swig washed. and I'm do washed. a jig Paul take a swig and you do a you want your back not to hurt Oh, your back's hurting, boy. Your back's hurting. Oh, your back feels fine. I, f- I just swigged and jigged, and my back is cured. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise, praise Lord. sweet baby Jesus. Praise carrot train. Praise, praise all Lord, these fucking praise people. Praise Lord. Praise Lord. The fucking wow. puritanical forces at work I in this country. I feel the Holy Spirit country, in this dude. room. Dude, fuck these temperance fucks, dude. Scotty's getting real pissed at people from like the 1890s right now. Oh man, like wait till we get to the when they actually ban alcohol. He's gonna be livid. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty's gonna be thinking it's like now, dude. Yeah, yeah. They ban alcohol. They ban it now. Drink anyway. <laughs> <coughs> All right. All right. So this next faggot. Let's see this picture. It's called The Preacher. The Preacher Man. Kind of introduced him with your last little bit there. <laughs> Billy Ray was a preacher's son, and when his daddy would visit, he'd come along. All right, so one of you faggots read this part. Uh, oh, what? Wait, you're supposed to do this. Nah. We'll blow it. Can you make it bigger for me? Yeah, okay. Oh, Paul, you're going to do it? Okay. I'll do it. I'm fine. Or you can do it if you want. <laughs> All right. Go for it. So, uh, what's his name? Can you scroll up a little bit so I can see it's, his name? It's uh, Wayne Wheeler. This is Wayne This is Wheeler. Wayne Bidwell Wheeler. We can just shut preacher. up and let the audience read it for themselves, you know? Fuck no, off, TJ. a terrible idea. What Under you- Wheeler's leadership, the Anti-Saloon League focused entirely on the goal of achieving prohibition because they're a bunch of cunts. Unlike Francis Willard's w- Women's uh, Christian Temperance Union, which dealt with many humanitarian issues, Wheeler felt the only way to successfully challenge the political influence of the Brewers was to focus purely on achieving national prohibition by any means necessary. By any means necessary. Yep. Wheeler was able to elect politicians by encouraging the dries of both political parties to vote for a single candidate who supported the dry cause. So actually, good strategy, regardless yep. of the party the candidate was affiliated with. In essence, it's important to oppose candidates based entirely on their position regarding prohibition, completely disregarding political party affiliation with other, or other issues. So this was, he, he, he realized that like... That's scary. Well, not only that, but he was the one of the first dudes to realize that like... You know what I mean? Like, we're just all Republicans, so let's all put all our differences aside, all the things that actually define us as different people, and let's put it all under the banner of prohibition. He was the first dude to start pushing it towards that. So you can see it building now. But aren't we we kind of that way now? I mean, I met so many people like, dude, I wouldn't vote for anyone unless they're pro-weed. It's like, what if they agree with you on everything else? No, dude. Yep. And people are like that. Everyone has their little pet (laughs) issues or things they actually give a shit about. Like, I care about the environment. So he basically used the big dry movement as a political movement to pressure political candidates to vote dry or else. And yeah, it was the only thing that mattered was was are you for prohibition or not? Yep. Everything else like it. Well, it's also scary because it's like he didn't care about anything else. They could have been like and the child molestation act. And it's like. 
prohibition, though, right? So yep. Wheeler developed what is now known as pressure politics, which is sometimes also called Wheelerism. So he he kind of wrote the book on this, like, hey, there's this big special interest group out there. Well, this, in this case, anti-alcohol. Well, people. dude, the, it's like the ultimate wedge issue, dude. Yep. All right, guys, I got. I'm I'm asked the chat for some criticisms. What are that? I wanted to see how our patrons are feeling about the show so far. Uh huh. Saying good show, but there's two main notes. One, drink more. Okay. Two, drink less so you can stay more focused. Well, what? Um, yeah. So just follow those two directives. Here, here's, here's, here's my directive to the chat. And we're cha- good. Here's my directive to the chat. More blankets and less blankets. Dude, here's my directive to the chat. Shut the fuck up! Whoa. I also want to see my titties. Here you go. Okay, well, that's fine. I, I agree with that. Gross. Put those away. Only because he humiliates CJ. Do I seem humiliated? Yes, you do. TJ, let's be honest. You're humiliated, dude. Humiliated, TJ. <laughs> oh, my God. Why does it always come to this? Because, they asked because for it, man. I in, just inside, give what they slash I want. TJ is just a fucking child inside. All go my titties. And it's like, boy. TJ, still with your man titties. And he goes, Well, yeah, I yeah. guess I may as well. Well, all we got to well, do, guys, well, well, all we got to do is well, drink well. more while drinking less. And that's but, all we got to do. Yeah, so, uh, yep, drink less slash more, and everyone will be happy. Uh, all right. Well, let's soldier on. So this Wheeler faggot. Basically, wedge politics. Oh, hold on, I'll uh, bring it back. Pressure up. politics. We don't issue. need it back up. Yeah, you do. You didn't. We got through him. It. We don't need to read all of this. You don't have to read all of this, TJ. You can like Wheeler read a- and the ASL gained a lot of support by creating loose alliances with groups who shared a common anti-alcohol sentiment, if oftentimes nothing else. This idea of supporting and or avoiding conflict with groups that generally consist of dries came to be known as the Ohio idea. Uh, There will be a quiz at the end. Okay. Wheeler considered racists, (laughs) nativists, progressives, suffragists, and populists to be a part of this Ohio idea. Wheeler especially supported suffragists. He and the ASL knew that most women in the early 20th century supported the idea of prohibition. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys oh, have dude. picked up yet on this the feminist angle and all this. Oh, yeah. Dude. It's a, it was a big thing. But not only did this come out of the suffragist movement, but this was a bit... This was like prohibition was one of the first big victories of feminism in America. Because this was framed as a feminist issue. Because remember, we talked earlier about those long-suffering wives getting the shit beat out of them by their husbands. And you know what? Something did need to change. It just went a little too far. And Carrie Nation was an example of that that we covered. <laughs> and wasn't you know? that around that time, too, that women got the right to vote as well? And you know, it, like what really fixed the fucking bars and sh- you know what really fixed things more than anything was uh, not segregating the saloons. Because saloons were kind of a men's place. After Prohibition ended, bars were kind of for men and women. And that solved a lot of the fucking problems. It was really this restrictiveness saying women can't be part of this that really caused all the fucking grief. Not all of it, but a but lot, a lot of, it. of it. So basically the bitches wanted to go drinking too. Of course. Who can I mean, they blame them? Didn't, they didn't recognize that that's what they actually wanted. Yeah, they thought, like, we need to ban this. And they're like, wait a minute, we need to get in on this. Yeah, exactly. They just, at first, they tried to take it away from us. They realized that's not what they really want. What they really want is to drink alongside us and get drunk, drink. too. Because they got problems as well. Drink? Did you say drink? Drink. Drink, dude. Uh, oh, God. I don't know. I like the pina colada one, dude. I mean, I haven't had a whole lot of it, but this cherry pie one is starting to get real. Yeah. Take, Weird thing about you. this All right, shit I'll trade is, you for a minute. Alcohol kind of like goes to the bottom of that shit, you know. I mean, well, it but, gets boozier as you get lower. Oh my god, dude! Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm at the almost. I'm at the bottom <laughs> of the jar of this cherry shit, and I've been. I'm whoa. I'm soupy. I'm soupy right now, TJ. What does that mean? <laughs> I've been oh. stewing. I've been in the crock pot for a few hours, and the meat's starting to fall off the bone. I'm soupy, TJ. I don't know what it means. That's how Paul likes meat, though. Man, you ain't got no street knowledge, TJ. I guess I do. Tina's a a straight buster. I can't look at you as a man who's been drunk before and tell you I'm soupy and you got to go, like, could you explain to me exactly what that metaphor means? (laughs) Yeah, explain it to me. Can you write a a, a treatise on how? 
I'm this sorry, man, I don't know so, every single thing. I'm not even asking you to know every single thing. I'm just asking you to have been drunk one He's time. He's asking you to nod your fucking... I've been drunk plenty of damn TJ. times. Well, then why don't you know what uh, what I meant when I said TJ, I feel you know, soupy? No one around me has ever said the word soupy you know you other to do? than your fat ass. You know what you what need to do, TJ? Mean? If you don't fucking know that... I'll just look it up on goddamn TJ, Urban Dictionary. Just what fucking it, nod your fucking head. You don't even know what it is. Just nod your fucking head, TJ. I'm gonna no, look up what fucking soupy means. I don't want no soupy sales. Bitch. I don't know. I don't know that this is already a meme. I was just describing how I feel. I feel soupy. How does it feel, TJ? Don't go looking to for it Paul elsewhere. Like don't you run do. to Google like you usually do. Just understand it. Understand Alcohol as a man. intoxicated, drunk, and vomiting. Wow, kid. So you got nah, this from TJ. somewhere else too. This ain't some unique Paul shit. Well, whatever. Who cares? Say, did Paul? You claim ain't that? vomiting either, so you ain't even. Did Paul claim soupy, that, bitch. dude? I just asked you to understand it. TJ, TJ. look. If I, didn't want I just shot. did. I had to look it up. I'm supposed to just know look. what it fucking means, look. never having heard it or experienced it before. I feel bad for TJ. you, TJ. I weep for you, TJ. TJ, if you interrupt me one more time, I'm gonna slap the shit out of you, bitch. <sighs> what do you want to say, Scotty? What I want to fucking say is, TJ, is you don't under- look, TJ. Even if you don't understand, you know you should have done as a man. Paul said, man, I'm feeling super chill. You should have said, damn, Paul. Damn, bro. You good? And Paul's yeah. like, I'm good, man. Let's keep going. Well, like, I don't I'm know. What Instead, said. TJ, you're like, what does stupid mean, Paul? Can you explain it to me? You what son of a bitch. What does that even mean? I've never what had a drop mean? of alcohol. Dude, you, TJ, you're a fucking square, TJ. You have, like, no social oh, skills, Oh, dude, he's dude. an L7 weenie. Dude, TJ a, is a TJ is a fucking square. A square motherfucker that never had no goddamn fucking social experience. You I don't tell. get down with none of this hippity hop, flippity flop nonsense. I'm sorry that you know I'm what, intellectually TJ? curious, and if I hear something I'm not You're gonna with, fucking, I ask a You know what, TJ? <laughs> oh, come on. Me and Paul, he's a martyr. Me and fucking Paul can I'm take not a fucking bar. martyr. I just value my... I'm take, I want to know. TJ, I'm taking you a bar. If I don't know something, I want to know it. No, you Fuck don't. You. Bullshit. You don't care about most things. Suck a dick. I want, you don't care I about most things. I cared about Soupy, didn't I? I guess you fucking I did. About I guess you fucking did, bitch. Yeah, you, you know damn what? Right, I did. You know what, TJ? <laughs> I'm gonna go start the. Church I'm gonna take you to a fucking bar. My life. To I'm gonna take you to a bar, bitch. TJ, and force you to talk to people I'm, you don't know. A revelation. Talk to someone you don't know, TJ. Take Whoa. a fucking chance with your goddamn miserable fucking life, you pussy. It's not. Whoa. How is the show derailed? The show is about alcohol. Us, we're just exhibiting the effects of alcohol. The show was derailed. No, motherfucker, show ain't derailed. No matter where the, the show goes, the show is not derailed. The show was never Man, meant to be Man, that's just somebody that's guy. not on the train with us, dude. What? We're going to get through this, motherfucker. We're doing a show. Yeah, we just got some it. shit we got to hash out. And this is about alcohol. Oh, and we're drinking moonshine. Why did I just do the Izzle thing? That was gay. Dude, yeah, <laughs> dude, you that was way gayer than me asking what Yeah, you're right, is, dude. Can I just, I'm so sorry, TJ. <laughs> well, that's why you don't fucking throw everything in my damn face? Because you don't know what verbal fucking snafu is around yeah. the corner. You're right, dude. I, I just <laughs> Paul, learned a lesson. Paul, Paul, just to the audience right now. For you just, I, so, I'm so sorry that dude, I Izzled in dude, front don't, of you. You're not Izzled, dude. You're not Snoop Dogg. <laughs> it came out of like... Even Snoop Dogg don't do that corny shit no more. I know, dude. I know. I know how lame it is. Yeah. That's why I'm apologizing for it. You, right. on the other you know hand, what? had a fucking 20-minute <laughs> argument with me over your fucking you know spurgy what, bullshit. I forgive you, Paul. Let's don't, you forgive me, me. This ain't about you. This ain't about you. This ain't about you, Paul. Let's move on. Let's just move on, dude. Who's this? Who's this faggot? Fucking? This is Senator Morris Shepard. Oh, Sounds yeah. like a dick, dude. The father of national prohibition. I'm fucking okay. with his ass. So, uh, during his tenure, Shepard was a vocal supporter of the temperaments movement. No shit. Whatever. So, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, he uh, wrote a fucking bill called the Shepherd Bone Dry Act. Ew. Sounds like a fucking sandy pussy. You don't want to fuck. To impose prohibition on the District of Columbia, including, uh, you know, he put it in the, you know, put it forth before the Senate, resolution for the 18th Amendment. So, he's the motherfucker that wrote this 18th the Amendment fuck bullshit. Fuck this dude. Yeah, this dude sucks. This so, dude fucking sucks. However, fucking during Nick, the Prohibition era, fucking nickels. A, a still that produced 130 gallons of moonshine per day was discovered on a Texas ranch that Shepard owned. Huh. So, so wait he's a, a hypocrite, too. Whoa. So, not only is he the motherfucker that started Prohibition, but he was... Se- this motherfucker just wanted to make more money on his moonshine. All right, let's take a second here. What's this, this guy's is name a again? Brick. Morris Shepard. He's dead now, obviously. Oh yeah. Senator let's all talk Morris about Shepherd. how we would have liked to kill Senator Morris Shepard for being a hypocritical bloat bag of bullshit. You know what I would have liked, dude? What? You go first, Scott. Fucking, you take him underneath the fucking still. 
Uh-huh. And you know, you want a bad alcohol, eh? You turn on the fucking goddamn fucking spigot, dude. And, and it's it, all hot. And it's all fucking hot. And he just fucking, he has to drink it. And it's just like, Bleh! he's like, oh, oh, God! He just fucking, it's like his insides are boiling. He's just forced, he's getting drunker. And he's like, oh, oh, vomit's coming out, blood's coming out. And he just fucking dies right fucking there, that piece of shit. What a dumb fuck. What about you, TJ? How would you have liked to kill Senator Morris Shepard, the cuck that wrote the 18th Amendment? I am a nonviolent person. Well, fuck you. Oh my god. god. What a <laughs> pussy. What a pussy. I'm a nonviolent person. Nonviolent, TJ? Nonviolent, Scotty. Huh? You know what I would like? You know how I would like to kill him? How's well, that? hold on. I'm going to let Scotty beat your ass first to make you a man. Huh? Sorry, Scotty. I, I don't believe in violence, Scotty. You don't believe in violence, huh, TJ? No, I don't. Hey, don't, <laughs> wallet, TJ, don't do that, you. Scotty. That's disrespectful. You're fucking ah. wallet, TJ. You're not violent. Don't resist. I'm not. I'm just. This is passive. Give me your wallet. Don't resist, dude. Passive resistance. It's not re- don't resist, TJ. You see passive resistance. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? <laughs> <laughs> Am I being detained? No. Give me your fucking money, bitch. I don't have any money in my wallet. Take your fucking passive. Ow. Take your passive. You're a passive. Ow. Oh, pacifist, dude. He hit back. He hit back. He hit back. What a hypocrite. Dude, fuck you, TJ. All right, well, you know, self-defense is a different matter, dude. That's not true. You're a pacifist. I never said I was a pacifist. I said I'm non-violent. Oh, I don't start you're... shit. I don't start shit. Fuck you, TJ. Why would I want to hurt this poor man, dude? Why would I want to hurt this poor gentlemanly, scholarly fellow here? TJ. Well, turd. This is the guy, you know, dude, he TJ. He made a smart business decision. He prohibited yeah. alcohol so he can make more money on selling alcohol. Yeah, That's exactly. That's American TJ. capitalism. If you got a problem with him, you got a problem with the whole system. I do. Well, I, I love I America. Do. I do. You guys are anti-patriots. You're communists. You deserve to be fucking shot by a cool. firing squad. Well, this is some Morris Shepard special that we've got right here. Straight from his old still. So, all right, Paul. Go through your overlong, elaborate means that you're going to kill this guy with. I would um I'll I'd put him get, on the screen. Okay, yeah, put him up. Yeah, put I, look at his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I've got look, a really good one here, but it, it, might, it might take a couple of seconds, Build your but hatred. I've got I've got it. Build your Fucking hatred. look him in the eye, Paul. Tell, you want me to get closer on his eyes? You know what, dude? Like face? like like Paul, I like you're telling him. Like, yeah, look, look right yeah. there. Yeah. Give me up. his ugly fucking stupid ass fake moralizing hypocritical right, face to look at while Paul, I'm doing this. I want you to say this to him like okay. he's standing right Like he's still you. alive. Yeah, you're about to, you're telling him what the fuck he's you like, do to him. All right, Mr. What? Shepard. All right, Senator Shepard. If you, if I should dignify you with that. Yes, Paul. That, that title of nobility. Mr. Shepard, here's what I'm going to do to you, dude. I'm going to come and pick you up. And I'm going to take you out on the nicest date that you've ever been on. I'm talking about steak, Mm -hmm. wine, no limit to the bill. And then we're going to go on a cruise together, you and me. We're going to hold hands, maybe even kiss as the sun goes down. And then once the cruise is over, we're going to start a family together, you and me. (laughs) We're going to be a gay couple. And our neighborhood is going to accept us because we're kind to their children. And we're going to keep a nice little garden. And then we're going to realize that we're, we were made for one another, you and I. We're, we're soulmates. And you're going to look at me one day and you're going to say, Paul, and I'm going to say, yes, Senator, because that's my pet name for him is Senator. I'm going to say, yes, Senator. And you're going to say, I love you, Paul. Will you marry me? And I'm going to say, no, you fucking cuck faggot. You wrote the 18th Amendment. You stupid douche. I never loved you. I've been sucking other dudes' dicks behind your back and showing them pictures of your tiny little wee-wee because you're a fucking piece of shit. And I'm going to walk out and leave him there in his tears. And then he's going to shoot himself in utter fucking horror, horror and destitution. I like damn, it. Damn, dude. Solid. Solid. Paul, Paul's dude. playing that long game, dude. Yep. The long fucking game. I love I, the man. commitment. I know. You got to commit. You guys ready for the next it's, faggot? That's why I maintain Brett Keen is a, a British thespian. So here's the next faggot. This is a, a bitch. 
Looks kind of like a slightly less hideous version of Ayn Rand. Okay. But still pretty ugly. Anyway, here she, she is. So we've now gone to after the amendment has been passed. because uh, I don't think it's been. I don't know if no, it's it been has passed been. yet. Has it has been. been. Yes. Okay. She was the enforcer. So this bitch's name is Mabel Walker Willebrand, the first lady of law. Yep. So when President Harding named Mabel Walker Willebrand Assistant Attorney General of the United States and put her in charge of prohibition enforcement policy in August of 1921, she seemed an unlikely choice. Willebrand had never been a member of the Women's Christian Temperance Union, never voted dry, never and even enjoyed an occasional drink till she joined the department anyway. Uh, In the 1920s, if you mentioned her name, it was like mentioning Sandra Day O'Connor's name in terms of renown. She was undoubtedly the most famous woman in America who wasn't in the movies. And she was an incredibly serious, determined, totally honest person who was told she had to enforce the law. So she was going to enforce the law. Um... During the early years of her administration, Willebrand was successful in some of the biggest prosecutions during Prohibition, including the 1923 prosecution of the Big Four of Savannah, reportedly the largest bootlegging ring in the United States, as well as uh, the bootlegging operations of Cincinnati bootlegger George Remus. According to the annual report of the U.S. Attorney General, Willebrand's office had a to- uh, This is how many people she uh, prosecuted. Yep. 48,734. Insane. That's just prohibition shit. Yep. That's from June of 1924 to June of 1925. That's fucking 50,000 people in a year. Yeah, but guess what, dude? It's called the drop in the fucking bucket. Of which 39,072 resulted in convictions. Do you you know how many, like, speakeasies, which is what they called bars during prohibition, there were in New York City alone? Oh, yeah, it was insane. It's, it's estimated between thirty and 100,000. I mean, there was... A, there uh-huh. was so, so this bitch busted 50,000 people. Like, good job. Yeah, Good job. You enforced the law, but guess what? It didn't fucking matter, dude. But she Criminals did bust were, up some of the biggest bootlegging operations and the, in the country. And all that would have happened if this hadn't been repealed is someone else would have taken their place. Oh, yeah. And that's, you know... That's and, that, exactly and that's true. the reality of prohibition on drugs is that, oh... Now you can't do this. Oh, really? Well, some criminals that are going to make a shit ton of money, they, they beg to differ. They're going to bring the shit in. She is also, uh, interestingly enough, the inventor of prosecuting major crime figures for income tax evasion. Cool. Rather than, you know, because, you know, you couldn't get like that. She, she was Al the one Capone, who, famously. Yeah, she figured out how to get Al Capone behind bars, basically. Yep. She realized, hey, we can't get him for any of the shit he's actually did because we just don't have the evidence, but we got ample evidence that his ass evaded taxes, so let's get him there. Uh, overall, I mean, uh, sounds like she wasn't really too gung-ho for this shit. She, she wasn't was a given, true believer. She was just given a job to do, and she did it. She and did she it. was dutiful, and she did a, as good a job as she could now, enforcing I don't res- an unenforceable law. I personally law. think you're culpable if you enforce laws like that. But I, I don't really see her as uh, as bad as some of these other people that actually... She's definitely not one of the bigger villains in this story, for sure. No, she's more of like just a useful idiot. Yep. Um, but yeah, like Scotty said, probably a drop in the bucket in terms of how many people were drinking on the uh, ground. Definitely a drop in the bucket. I one thing that I don't know if, this, if Paul's document covers that I think is kind of interesting about Prohibition is... Um, there was uh, religious exemptions for a lot of it. Oh, yeah. A lot of religions had exemptions for, you know, oh, wine, sac- use yeah, the ceremonies and wine, stuff like dude. that. Uh, there was also, um, like, we have medicinal marijuana today, but it's kind of just a farce so that people can, you know, drink, you know, you can smoke marijuana. You can drink marijuana, yeah. They dude. drink some marijuana. You actually can drink marijuana in a way. Well, yeah, you can get those marijuana sodas and shit. But anyway, uh, the, back in those days, they had medicinal whiskey, oh. you know? You could get a whiskey prescription from your doctor. Yeah. And, you know, you could pretty much buy as much as you wanted. You had to go to a government-owned, like, whiskey store and buy whiskey, you know, for medicinal purposes. But really, you know, it was just for people who wanted to drink. You know, and everyone knew it. It was just an open secret. It was just a workaround for the law. So there was a lot of little uh, workarounds people figured out for uh, for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually that that dude we talked about, uh, Wheeler, that got it banned in Maine or whatever the fuck. 
Oh, I don't think it was Wheeler, but whoever he was that got the first. A, the, that was one of the big workarounds in Maine was that when this ban was instituted, people just started going to the doctor all the time with aches and pains and shit and getting their. I'm sick. I need the whiskey. whiskey. And the doctors were happy to do it because they made money. You know, well, I mean, the you, you, had the, you had a similar experience in California when you got your medical card before they legalized the recreation. It was the there. same way. It was, oh, it was my bad. It you know, And it's like. They come in and tell you how to get the weed card. Like it's yeah. a, they don't even make any fucking pretense that it. Well, at least when I got it, it might be different now. And you know, California just legalized, so it doesn't really matter anymore. But like back when I got my green card in California, it was they sit you down and they go, "Okay, here's how you get it. You got to have th- three things. So whatever those three things are, don't matter. But they got to fit the criteria that they could be helped by marijuana. So back pain is a good one. Depression, anxiety, blah, 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 blah. They give you a list of shit you could say. And then they're like, now what are your three things? (laughs) It's just a joke. You know what I mean? Hey, guys. In the chat room. What you feeling about this, huh? In the chat room. How you feeling, Patreons? You take a pulse. How you feeling about your special Uh, episode just for you guys? Are you suspecting something that TJ's kind of drunk, dude? I think TJ might be a little drunk. TJ, you seem a little drunk, dude. You know what the people? You know what the patrons want? What What do they want? want? I can hear them psychically. 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 Cycling. They want to hear from Senor Tomat, TJ. Senor. Oh, Tomato? they do, do they? They want to be addressed Senor by their Tomato? god. All right, give me a minute. Oh, this is TJ's ugly face, dude. Get off yeah. the screen, TJ. Whoa, what the fuck? What whoa, happened? dude, whoa. What's I going thought he on? was in here somewhere. What have you done, TJ? He's in your heart. Done? There he is. <laughs> dude, there he is. Bow before him. Mm. Greetings, Patreons. Mm. People who have gone into their wallets mm. and exchanged only five dollars for... This heaping mouthful of steaming content here on Deep Fat Fried. I ask you, how do you feel? How do you feel with your mouth full of juicy, crisp flavors and your belly full of delicious content? We want to know. So let these stupid neckbeard bastards whom I employ tell you, tell them what you think. So that they may bow to your will. I am Senior Tomat, and I am bouncing to the rhythm of life, as I hope you are also doing. Bounce away, Patreons. Bounce away. So beautiful, Senior Tomat. Dude, dude. the ever bouncing nature of the reality, dude. We have to A go. lot of people that are heretics. Has said that Senor Tomat is an orange. This is heresy. No! And should not be spoken. Should not be spoken to you. Dude, I will sue those fucking people. Those people are ridiculous. They don't. I only bring it up because it's so disgusting to hear those sentiments. So, TJ, can you fucking read about the fucking. So, what does the fucking 18th Amendment say, dude? What does it actually fucking say? Well, That's Paul, a good point. I Paul Bizarrely chose I, not to pull that in his many hours. Yeah. Wink, wink, wink. Many minutes of re- uh, hours. Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> All right. Slip of the tongue. Eighteenth Amendment. Pulling it up now. <laughs> Slip of the tongue, Paul. Eighteenth Amendment. Bullshit. Now. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason I didn't pull it because it's a bunch of really wordy gobbledygook that works summarizing better by telling the story of prohibition. Shut up, no, Paul. Paul this but whatever. Is, yeah, go ahead and read this it. This is enshrined in our fucking. Yeah, Paul. Paul. It's well, not, not anymore. A, it isn't. You're right, well, it dude. Was. It was repealed. It's by not the an oversight that you forgot to pull the Eighteenth Amendment, Paul. You're right. I didn't forget to pull it's it. Much better. No, no. You, you, the artistic choice you made was yeah, right. It was Paul. beautiful, Paul. Beautiful choice. You're so smart. So insightful. Whatever, TJ. Yeah, because it's this. Oh my God! It's so long. These three meager fucking yeah, paragraphs. Three, are so just read it. It's gonna be. Long. It's gonna be scintillating, TJ. Scintillating. After one year from the ratification of this article, the manufacture, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquors within the importation thereof into or the exportation thereof from the United States and all the territory subject to the jurisdiction thereof for beverage purposes is hereby prohibited. The Congress and several states shall have concurrent power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. 
This article shall be inoperative unless it shall have been ratified as an amendment by the, of, the, of the Constitution by the legislatures of the several states as provided in the Constitution within seven years from the date of the submission hereof to the states of the Congress. Okay. Wow, well, there you go. That's the legislation that actually banned alcohol. That's what we're talking about, Paul. That's the subject the words. of the fucking episode, Paul Zego. No, it isn't. Yes, it is, no, Paul. It yes, no, it, it fucking is. It's the lives of the people that endured it, TJ. No, Paul. The lives of the people that made it and the lives of the people Those that endured are the it. the fucking goddamn codified words, Paul, that cause this course of action. Paul, why do you respect the rule of all, Paul? Because it's what? written down, Paul. You guys are both... Because there was a time in the world, Paul. It's written in the scriptures. There it's was written a time in, in the world, Paul. You guys Well, both... the law was what any fucking person above you Paul said, Paul. is a fool. You guys both these laws, Paul. You guys both sucked Ken Burns' dick. Yes, I don't I believe in the entirety of his thing he that, he, that he reads the entire 18th Amendment. He does, he does indeed. I don't Paul. believe he does. He, he does. does. I don't times. He does believe indeed. You know he does. He does indeed, Paul. I don't I'm believe he does. He does indeed, you heard Paul. Here, I'm suing Paul. Fake news. He fake loves news. the 18th Amendment. You, we all love uh, the 18th I'm, Amendment. I'm the victim oh, of fake news. sex with a porn wait a star. Wait a minute, guys. What? Guys. Piece what? Shit. Guys, wait. What? We've been distracted from drinking. Oh, yeah. No, oh, sorry. Not Zerobio. Oh! Ha cha cha. So, Scotty, you know who this guy is, right? George Washington. Oh, that's Al Capone, dude. Finally, we get our first hero yep. in this story. Al fucking Capone, born in Brooklyn to Italian immigrants. He was a five points gang member who became a bouncer in organized crime premises such as brothels. In his early 20s, he moved to Chicago, became a bodyguard. And trusted factotum for Johnny Torrio, head of a crime syndicate that illegally supplied alcohol. The forerunner of the outfit and was particular, I'm sorry, politically protected through the Union Cilicia, Sicilia, Siciliana? I don't know. A con, it's some Italian horse shit. You did your best. I did the best I could. You A conflict with the North Side Gang was instrumental in Capone's rise and his fall. Torrio went into retirement after North Side gunmen almost killed him, handing control to Capone. Capone expanded the bootlegging business through increasingly violent means, but his mutually profitable relationships with Mayor William Hale Thompson and the city's police meant that he seemed safe from law enforcement. We actually have a Capone video if you guys want to see yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good... Is, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's say that's a good. That's yeah. Let's fucking see this shit. Oh, hold on, we gotta put our headphones on. By 1931, Al Capone was at the top of his game. He had no real rivals anymore among Chicago's mobsters, and he continued to expand his empire in case prohibition was repealed. He took over labor unions, chauffeurs, plumbers, city workers, motion picture projectionists, soda pop peddlers, kosher poultry dealers, and he toyed with the idea Where'd it go? Dude, what happened? I don't know. Maybe the video I pulled is fucked up. It might be. Damn. It is. That Fuck sucks. Dude. Well, Sorry. anyway. Well, anyway, Al Capone was a badass son of a bitch. So he was basically just used as a middleman wrong. between the political elites and... You're not wrong, my... Whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I understand. No, he was like a middleman. He was the necessary evil for the political people that like were pushing prohibition to keep drinking themselves and keep their friends in booze and make sure that you know. So th here's what happened, right? You know, uh, he's just an example of this. He's not. I mean, he's a prominent example, but just another example out of many. You know, you push alcohol into a black market. And all of a sudden, all sorts of gangsters start profiting from it, and they're killing people, they're killing each other, and um, 
apparently he was making so much money that he was buying the mayor, he was buying the police. <laughs> of course. No one was fucking real. I mean, like, you know, the federal government wanted his ass. Couldn't bribe them. But every, all the local authorities, they were in his pocket. You know, uh, well, and anyone who this. opposed him was just basically found in a pool of their own uh, blood. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, it's an easy principle. It's like I work with this guy and I get rich. I work against him and I get a bunch of lead pumped into my fucking body by a fucking Tommy gun. Carrot and the stick going on. Carrot and the stick. Oh, we'll pee again, huh? Yep. Goddamn, dude. Fucking lazy Paul? ass fucking Paul. Yeah, whatever, Paul. You fucking goddamn fucking disgusting degenerate fucking lies. Let me tell you something about Paul Scotty. Let me tell you something crazy. Paul's a fucking mass murderer, dude. Doesn't surprise me, dude. No, I mean, he's like run. He's told me, like, he's in a radical Islam and shit. Cool. He's told me he's planning on running some people down in his van. Said he's already done a few attacks. Jesus, know? dude. Just hasn't been pegged for him, you know? Even said he was instrumental dude, in fucking- 9 11. <laughs> Did it, but there's so many times like we've been, me and Paul have been drunk, and pretty much every time we've gotten drunk, Paul's been convinced I hate him. Yeah, dude. It's like Paul like coming to the people like Scotty fucking hates me, dude. I fucking know Scotty fucking hates me. You know he wants me fucking dead, dude. Yeah, man, Paul's crazy, dude. Yeah, Paul, dude, Paul Paul's and drinking just don't fucking mix, dude. Paul fucking act crazy, dude. Paul, crazy is how many times have you been convinced does. when you've been drunk that I fucking like wanted to beat the shit out of you or hated you? At least several times. Uh, At least several times. Paul, I got my own. You can keep this one. What are we talking? What are we talking? No, I said. I said how many times? I said how many times we, that we've been drunk? Oh, we were talking about how you're a terrorist. Oh, oh yeah. Scotty started yeah. talking about. Oh, all this for all the times that Scotty's been drunk and wanted to kill me. Yeah. There's been three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go take my own piss while you're doing that. Scotty can keep me honest on these because he was there. And I was, uh. we were all, we're both drunk and you and both and almost. That's funny. It's funny. There's there's three times you can actually reference, yeah. dude. So the first time that Scotty wanted to kill me when he was drunk was I was staying in a in a hotel in Ohio, and you guys invited me over for the Super Bowl. Oh God, yeah, I remember this, yeah. dude. And so me and Ashley came over for the Super Bowl, and we were game started, and there was like a controversial play, and I don't remember. Maybe you remember more about what the play was. Uh, it was like whether you caught the pass or not, some yeah, shit like that. Was it a fumble or was it a complete pass, basically? And I didn't have a dog in the game. I don't really usually watch the Super Bowl. TJ, <laughs> I didn't even know this and made a bet. Oh, God, dude, and yeah. There was money riding on this game. And when I did something to Scotty, and Scotty had been drinking, we all been drinking. Oh, yeah, dude. We were pretty, we were pretty <laughs> And so we were arguing back and forth about that. And then all of a sudden, I was like, you know what, dude? It looked like it was a, you know, whatever it was. It was incomplete to me, dude. I don't know, dude. Whatever. I don't and, know. Then, and then the call gets made, and you're like, yeah. bullshit. Yeah. So the call got made, and it went the opposite way. And I was like, oh, man, that's bullshit. And you were like, you know what, fucking Paul? You know what? <laughs> Get out of my fucking house, bitch. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> is this real? And you're like, you goddamn right, it's real, motherfucker. <laughs> Get out of my house. So I was like, all right, Ashley, let's get up and go. So we got up and left, and then we made up the next day. So that was time number one. Yeah, dude, I was, I was violently angry at you then, because, like, dude, I did, I did not want to lose that money, and I was fucking plastered. Yeah. Time number two. I'm trying to remember what time number two. Oh, yeah, time number two was we all been out drinking all night, and I had somebody staying at our place, and so <laughs> oh, I yeah. fucking wasted. And wanted to like crash at our place, and I was like, "Dude, you're gonna be fucking so miserable." And I, I don't, I, and, I, and, I, and I wasn't logical at all. I'm like, "No, nah, dude, like, because it was a like a ten minute Uber ride." Yeah, it wasn't far. And I was like, "Just let me get you." Oh, Paul, you don't want me in your fucking house? Then fuck you. And you walked out. <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa, shit!" That sounds like me. And then, oh my god. And then the third one was um. Seattle for uh, drunken peasants. Oh, where well, I took your vape. I, I, yeah. I literally just stole your vape from you, dude. Yeah, he had my vape, and he was like, I'm going to use your vape. And I was like, all right, man. And he had it for a while and shit, and we'd finish the stage show, or all, we, all three, we were too drunk to keep going. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, all right, man, I'm going to go outside and we get that vape. And he was like, huh? No. I vape, motherfucker. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. 
Well, did I? Uh, that's that's, 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 Paul, that's pretty weird. Oh, shit. I have my, I'm dude. so drunk, I have my mic <laughs> off the <laughs> dude, whole you time. You know what's fucking funny, though? About the whole fucking thing is dude. that. <laughs> Paul's mic cuts is, off. Is, is, that it was stories, fucking, dude. is that it was fucking goddamn. They don't even know the story. They didn't it was hear Paul's it. fucking vape. That's okay, vape. dude. They'll have to lip read it. It was Paul's fucking vape. They didn't hear the story, dude. Anyway, whatever. Long story short, one time Scotty wanted to kill me over football, one time Scotty wanted to kill me. Uh, over not wanting him to fucking sleep on my floor because he would have hated himself for doing it because it would have been awful. And one time, Scotty wanted to kill me for taking my vape back from him. Oh, that's dude. A, that's the long and the short dude, of it. Wasn't there another time? I'm fucking thinking there's a time. Was there one other there. time? I feel like there's a time we're fucking, we're, we're like forgetting that I wanted to fucking kill you for some, something else. Yeah, maybe I just didn't. Oh, know. you know what it was? Well, what was it? Was you had plans or something? I'm all like, Paul, we need to pull this thing or do this thing for drunken peasants. And you're all like, Oh, dude, I made this plan. I'm all like, it's not fucking important to you, huh? Well, fuck you. And I like, hung up on his home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let the I don't even remember what that was about, but I called TJ right back, and I was like, TJ, Scotty just called me and like screamed at me about some <laughs> shit. Is everything okay? He's like, no, I don't worry about it. He's all right. <laughs> that was about it. Oh, that's I came down. I'm like, fucking, I'm going to beat Paul's ass. <laughs> <laughs> that she just all like she just like yeah Scotty threatened to beat the shaddy but that's pretty much that's pretty normal. Well, they, yeah, at that point it wasn't the first time, so it's just one of those things, dude. It is what it is. I know Scotty loves me. If he didn't, he would he would already, he'd just beat the shit out of me now. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's pretty true. <laughs> that's pretty much true. All right, so uh, Al Capone, badass motherfucker, whatever. So the next fucking faggot on this list is oh, this guy. What a bowler hat man. Whoa. This guy's this guy's a thing, man. This, this dude is, is awesome. This is the the mayor of Chicago that was helping Al Capone cool. run his game, and he's pretty awesome. This is uh, fucking yeah. William Big Bill Thompson, dude. He's awesome. William Big Bill Thompson. Dude, don't you wish you were in a time that you could pull off a hat like that, dude? I could do it. I'll do it now. I don't give a no, shit. No, you can't, I'm dude. I'm buy a bowler hat. Fuck you. Yeah, it looks pretty awesome, man. Dude, you can't pull off that hat. This dude is aw- This dude's... I like him. I like this yeah, guy. Yeah, we're a fucking suit, TJ. How about that, Where buddy? are the real men gone? Chicago's longtime Republican mayor and permanently on the take. <laughs> awesome. No shit. Is- Big Bill right. Thompson made sure gangsters like Johnny Torrio and Al Capone had little to fear from the law. In 1927, he decided to run again, promising to end police raids that seemed only to affect thirsty working people and leave the big shots untouched. Capone gave Thompson an estimated quarter of a million dollars to run his campaign, and Thompson won by a landslide. <laughs> what a guy. This guy is... This Dude, political crop at its finest. He said, uh... When I'm elected, we will not only reopen places these people have closed, but we'll open 10,000 new, new ones. No copper will invade your home and fan your mattress for a hip flask. Sounds like a fucking American goddamn dude, dude, hero to take me, Take him dude. down, put us up. We got a drink to this motherfucker. Okay. Yeah. It's a big bill, dude. So, so think about this. A fucking unpopular federal fucking law has passed, a constitutional amendment, and all this guy was fucking saying was... Do you really want these fucking assholes fucking your shit up? This law fucking sucks. I'm getting rich because a bunch of gangsters are paying me off. Yeah, they might be killing some fucking innocent people every now and then. But God bless them. We need to drink in this country. To Big Bill. To Big fucking Bill. May he fucking rest in peace for letting these people fucking drink. Which is all they want. He's to actually do. alive to this day. No, he isn't. No, he's not. <laughs> I know. I'm You're a lying sack of shit. He's dead as fuck. I thought maybe you'd be drunk enough to fuck All these people it. are dead as fuck. Uh, next motherfucker. Al Capone actually died of syphilis too. I uh, guess what side this guy's on. Well, let's put put the picture up and I'll tell you. <laughs> I wonder. So, Attorney General Harry M. Doherty, the Ohio gang leader, as Warren Harding's campaign manager and Attorney General Henry Harry Doherty preferred dispensing patronage to practicing law. Doherty's Ohio gang, the circle of hard-drinking old friends he rewarded with federal jobs, quickly came to see the enforcement as prohibition of prohibition as a potential profit center 
Selling bootleggers' pardons, paroles, and protecting from arrest and pro- persecution. So, so guys, it just became a racket. These guys see a racket. <laughs> yep, they're just like, you know, you know, what, what? You know, you know what's going to happen, guys? They're going to look back on marijuana prohibition 100 years from now, and they're going to go, what a fucking racket. Oh, yeah. That's all, that's all it is now. Yeah. Because you know what? What was it like before they before the, all these states passed medical marijuana laws and recreational laws? There was like 760,000 people arrested every year. Yep. It's just a money-making fucking scheme. It's, you know what? You got busted with drugs. You know what that entails? Not only do you get arrested, but it's like, okay, oh, but guess what? It doesn't need to go on your record if you have a little small amount. Just go to drug court for every day for a year and, yep. pay, and pay for piss tests and pay for the court and pay this and pay that. It's just a fucking giant racket yep. that these po- politicians have just seen to make money off of you. While this they all sit there and the smoke weed themselves. Of that. Some and then, motherfucker and, who sees this law and is like, I can profit from this. Because guess what? I'll if sell, it's, if it's sell legal, pardons. Well, here's the problem. If it's legal, then yeah, the state still gets the, your money because you, you pay a tax. But they can't just put it in some fucking slush fund. They actually have to use it for what people actually need, like schools and roads and other shit. Instead of going to the people that really want it, the politicians. This motherfucker here named George Remus. He's awesome, dude. George Remus is fucking... This dude is tight as fuck. He's like... He's even bigger than Al Capone when it came to defiance... Of the law, because Al, Al Capone was basically just a distributor. I mean, he oversaw bootlegging operations and shit, but this dude saw the real profit potential in subverting these laws and, and started a huge empire. He was a totally legit businessman. He was like a, a lawyer, a big a big lawyer, who when this law was passed was like, dude, what's a better shakedown than being a lawyer? Oh, selling yeah, booze during prohibition. Yeah, no shit, right? And he found a way to do it, and it's just amazing, dude. Uh, it said he had uh, 3,000 employees working three <laughs> shifts a day, He's doing millions of dollars worth of business a year. 1925, Remus was indicted for violating the Volstead Act 3,000 times. Took the jury less than two hours to find Remus guilty. He was sentenced to serve two years in federal prison. When Only two out, years, by the way. When he got out, he was shot by his wife. Oh, he, I'm sorry. He shot his wife for betraying him. He was found not guilty on the grounds of insanity. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, dude. George Remus was, a, a, was a baller. Mo- and, you know, they, they don't have role models like this for the kids anymore. Is he really had funny? an incredibly opulent house that was just, like, gilded to the point of, like, Trump over the top. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, like, everything was gold. Everything in there was an artifact from... It was just, you know, he had this totally opulent lifestyle. He had thousands of people, like you said, working for him as underlings, running this giant bootlegging scam that was based around... Like okay, so when the when the bill passed, tons of alcohol distributors had these big barrels of shit warehoused. And they're like, well, what do we do with that? The federal government was like, all right, all that shit stuff is in impounded. You know what I mean? You have to leave it where it is and just abandon it. So there was these huge warehouses filled with booze from the pre-prohibition times that George Remus was just like. Why don't we break in there and take that? Like, why don't we find a way to subvert that law and get all that shit out of there and sell it? Yeah, and he or, did it. Or just kind of deal with the fucking people that owned it. Like, look, you can't legally sell this, but maybe this shit just yeah. falls off the truck. It's a transfer for, you know, rehousing of the liquor with me. <laughs> exactly. And I'm going to give you this much money and you're going to transfer the housing of the liquor to me. You know, whatever. He found... Every or, different type or, of way yeah, you could or think. Or it was destroyed or something. Because remember, he was a lawyer. So he knew how to walk around the legal loopholes and shit. And he found ways to transfer all this alcohol to him and then sell it and lose it. You know what I mean? Oh, man, the shipment of this stuff when we were trying to take it to the next place it was warehoused was robbed. <laughs> or it disappeared. The guy that was driving my truck drove off with it. I mean, <laughs> what do you want to do? Meanwhile, he's just selling it to people. All right, this guy's a true hero, man. The next one? This guy right here. Oh, yeah. He's a badass son of a bitch. Yep. Fiorello LaGuardia. Yep, the wet congressman. Yep. Uh, Fiorello LaGuardia was mayor of New York for three terms from 1934 to 1945. He served in uh, Congress from 1916 to 1918, again in 1922 through 1930. He was a vocal critic of the Volstead Act, which is one of these prohibition things. It's like the... Uh, yeah, well, that, that's, uh, that's actually the, the act. The 18th the Amendment. Act right. That's, act. Yeah. that's the name of it. it. 
1926, he called 20 newspapermen and photographers into room 150 of the House Office Building in Washington, D.C. and mixed near beer with malt extract, which then fermented and became beer. He downed a glass and then did the same demonstration in New York City, arguing that prohibition created contempt and disregard for the law all over the country. So this dude was brilliant. And you got you to gotta understand that sound like just reading that dry kind of fact that I, I pulled for it doesn't really. He sat in front of these people and he was like, look, I'm going to make alcohol right now and I'm going to drink it. And you're, nobody's going to arrest me. Nobody's going to do a fucking thing. And he did it. And it was to illustrate a point that by that time, the hypocrisy was already over the top. People were still drinking. It was illegal. It was obviously just enriching a few people who had a, you know, a stake in the enforcement of the Volstead Act. And he was a ballsy motherfucker, dude, to come out against a big, you know, think about this. This wasn't just a law that was passed. This was a fucking constitutional amendment. And he was like, fuck the Constitution. I'm going to make beer right here in front of the... Is everybody looking? All the cameras on me? All right, here you go. Drinking beer. Blah, 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 blah. All right, what are you going to do? Nothing? All right, see? Well, look at it. Listen to his other accomplishments, too. LaGuardia secured his place in history as a tough-minded reform mayor who helped clean out corruption... Uh, bring in gifted experts and fix upon the city a broad sense of responsibility for its own citizens. His administration engaged new groups that had been kept out of the political system, gave New York its modern infrastructure, and raised expectations of new levels of urban possibility. Right, because he was that fucking instrumental to making that city what it is. He's one of the foundational figures of New York City and really has accomplishments well beyond prohibition. But I brought him up here because he was one of the voices that pointed out the total hypocrisy. This is when the re really the sentiment started to change amongst people, where it was no longer just a game because, you know, there were various stabs made at enforcing this fucking. <laughs> well, what you're saying is this was sold to the American people like it always is. Like this is for, this is to protect families. This is to protect okay. children and, and, and women and the vulnerable Drake. people in society. But all it actually did Drake. was enrich a fucking select few fucking people. Then you had to exploit it. And it's the same fucking thing with fucking marijuana prohibition and prohibition and all this other Drake, shit. Scotty. It fucking enriches a small group of people. I understand, Scotty. You got to drink, man. Shut up, TJ. I'm going to slap the shatty. Drink, dude. Scotty. TJ. Yes, I am, dude. I have to empathize with the people that started this. Because I can understand being a, like, women really were instrumental in, in the passing of prohibition. Oh, yeah. completely. And they had good reason, dude. And they really did. I mean, I left a lot of uh, personality. I mean, if listen, if you, look, if you really want to know more about prohibition, watch the Ken Burns documentary. Even go beyond that. Because it's in three parts. But, I mean, that's still a pretty fucking solid look at the issue. But what I'm saying, like... Because the, the whole first part of that is all about what led to prohibition. And you could totally yes. understand these women's plights. You could empathize with them completely. you're a woman, you got no power, you got no fucking status in society, your husband is coming home drunk every night, wasting his paycheck on booze, beating the shit out of you, maybe even raping you, beating the shit out of your children, all sorts of horrible shit caused by his alcoholism. Of course you're going to be like, this is a social ill. We got to fucking solve this. So you can't really... Like be against the people at the beginning. Now, we made we made fun of a lot of the people at the at the start of this, and maybe a lot of those people, the big people in the movements, didn't have the purest of motives. But when it comes to people, I understand their motives to really understand why this was such a huge American point. You can't look at them and go, they were just dumb and they were assholes. As much as we've been doing that tonight, it's fun to do that. But these were people that genuinely believed that they were trying to solve a societal ill, and they were wrong about it. And that's the big American lesson. Here. Hey, Paul, is there some reason why your mic is registering a little lower than it should be? Because I fucking have it off again. Don't, I don't know. Just, okay, God just, damn it, Paul. About, Paul, just don't turn that mic God off. God damn right? you, Paul. Keep your fucking mic just on. Just keep it on, dude. Just keep it on. All right, I'm flipping it like this. Yeah, I'm going to tape that shit. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to use it so I can fucking, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not... Anyway. I, Paul was trying to say... You're too drunk to remember to turn it back on. Anyway, so whatever. He empathizes with a common person that this... People can th turn up the volume. That the Volstead Act were meant to protect. Exactly. 
like um you know you have to understand that perspective you have to give deference to that perspective women were under a lot of pressure and the idea of prohibition was born out of the right place and it was just implemented in, a, in the wrong uh, way as they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions exactly dude and i mean it's, it's fuck it's, i can't believe my mic was turned it, off it, i know dude again for the second time what the fuck don't turn your mic off again oh. dude I'm Just too drunk do to do this. Um, Can we make it through this? It's fine, Paul. It's the second time it's happened. I'm Just stupid. St- Just stop doing it, Paul. All right. I'm, I turned it around, so I can't even see the even switch do anymore. Right, Don't so do this it. This is Al Smith, dude. Al Smith is a gangster. This is Al Smith. He's the cocktail president. The contrast between Smith and his opponent in the 1928 presidential election could not have been clearer. Herbert Hoover, the Republican nominee. Herbert. Shut up. Favorite prohibition. Herbert Hoover, TJ. At least in public. It was a great social Uh, and economic experiment. It was Uh, was was an economic. Noble in motive and far-reaching in purpose, he said. But in a nod to swing voters disillusioned with the Volstead Act, Hoover also conceded that problems with the law must be worked out constructively. The country may have been changing, but the dries were not. They had rejected every proposal to revise the Volstead Act, insisting that stronger enforcement was the answer. Once again, big cities found themselves pitted against small towns. As the presidential campaign began, Hoover preferred to remain above its bitterness. But his surrogates fanned out across the, the country, intent on doing all they could to preserve the 18th Amendment and destroy poor fucking Al Smith here. Smith's cause had probably always been hopeless. The economy was still booming and no one saw a way that the Republicans could lose. Smith's candidacy did bring thousands of big city working class voters to the polls for the first times. But his religion and his opposition to prohibition cut deeply into the supposedly solid Democratic South. Hoover won by six million votes. Smith was stunned by the size of his defeat and the viciousness of the campaign against him. He said, I do not expect to run for office again. I have had all of it that I can stand. Now, he did give a speech after the repeal of the 18th Amendment. Which I am going to show now. Headphones, gentlemen. This is Al Smith's 37 second speech. We can't hear it. Can't hear it. Crank that soldier boy. Turn it up a little bit. There we go. Hold on. I'm going to have to go back and uh, raise the volume via. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, this is it's an old clip, so it's hard. Of course, I am delighted. Okay. By the final repeal of the 18th Amendment. I felt all along that when this matter was properly submitted to the rank and file of our people, they would readily see that it had no place in our Constitution. It would be very difficult, if not impossible, to estimate the benefit that will come to this country from the lesson taught to the coming generations to make it their business to see that no such matter as this is ever again made the subject of federal constitutional law. Amen. All right, it might have been a little too loud. I'm sorry for that. But Ow. Uh-huh. Ow. Ow. Al Smith is now, a fucking legend. And now today, people are fucking free in this country to get fucking wasted if they want to. Yep. You know what? There was a quote that I didn't pull for him, but it was kind of funny. It was off the record, and it ended up being published. He was talking to a, a journalist, and he said... Um, wouldn't you like to have your foot up on the brass rail and blow some foam off some suds right now? And this was during Prohibition. He was talking to the guy honestly, man to man. He was like, wouldn't you like to be sitting in a fucking bar right now with your foot on the brass rail with a nice sudsy fucking beer in front of you and blow the foam off that motherfucker and just drink it with me? Speaking of drinking. This is what I'm talking about, dude. Al was a fucking legend, dude. And we should all be thankful to him because it's people like him that challenged this stupid bullshit so that we could sit here and drink this legally and have a good time. All right. Listen, look God at this. God bless this guy. Drink bless to Al. 
Al. To Al. Hold on. Right. Okay. Shit. TJ to Al. Come here and get some more of that. Get up. Get up. Come here. I'm gonna pour you some more of that. You're almost out. You need more. I have a bunch. I can't drink all this. Come here, bitch. I'm not going to spill a drop, bitch. What do you it. think I am, a punk bitch? Look. Look at that. Not a drop spilt. How I little faith you have in me, TJ. I thought you and I okay. were friends, TJ. I, I thought stand. we were friends, shut TJ. Up, Paul. Paul, you know what this proves, Paul? I T correct. Scotty, hold up. TJ, shut up. Does TJ Scotty, you? Scotty. Yes, sir. Did Is TJ my friend, dude? No. He's not, dude. He's not acting he like a friend. He, doesn't trust he, he wanted to see me fail when I poured that, and I poured it perfectly. Dude, Paul. this just shows he doesn't trust anybody. Don't what trust happened nobody. to you, TJ? What happened to you? Why do you not trust anybody? <laughs> he doesn't fucking trust anybody. I've what never been fuck, anything dude? but a friend to you, TJ. Why You're don't you... are extrapolating way too much. No, I'm not. Shit, this is dude. an issue we need to cover. <laughs> Piece of shit, TJ. We need to cover this before we move on, TJ. Why don't you trust me? I'm, let me tell you something, TJ. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be real with you right now. Yeah, what's up? I ain't Cody Weber. Yeah. And I ain't fake Sagan. Yeah. I'm Paul Zico. Just because you've had a few people that you've, you've had collaborations with and it's ended on a sour note, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean that I'm going to be that way. I'm here to work with you guys. You know I what? love you, TJ. Paul, Paul listen. TJ wants to sabotage. You're my brother, TJ. <laughs> sabotage. Scotty's my brother, Paul, TJ. Sabotage, Paul, TJ. Paul, sabotage, up, TJ, dude. I just thought you were too drunk to pour it, all right? I just, I'm not, it has nothing to do no, with some underlying no, shit. It goes dude. deeper no, than that. No, it doesn't. It goes. No, you're a liar, no, TJ. Paul, no, it doesn't. Not, it goes TJ, deeper no. than that, TJ. You don't trust me. You think I'm going to. Fuck you up. You think I'm going to put things on you? Shit, See? Your brother's trying to help you. Oh, come on. TJ. Knock it off. Admit the fucking truth. Attack Paul, dude. No, come on. He doesn't want to attack me because I'm right. No, fuck Paul truth. You didn't trust Paul. You don't trust me. I just thought he was drunk, dude. Be honest. I thought he was too drunk to pour Be it. honest. What? That's just not say it. That's not even Paul. it, dude. Just say it. Bullshit. Just no. say it. No. No. Admit it, dude. Just say it. Just say, Paul, I'm wary of you. I'm afraid. I never said that. I'm afraid one day you're going to turn on me. I'm afraid one day you're going to fucking shit on me. I'm your friend, TJ. I never said otherwise. I know the, the, the truth. There is no truth. The truth. This is the truth, TJ. I'm the truth. There's no truth. Paul Zico is the truth. There's no truth. Ow! Stop admit, it! Admit you didn't trust Paul. Get out of here! No, just I say it! Just say it! Look I at me, TJ! Paul. I just thought he was you too drunk to pour Paul. the drink. You didn't trust fucking Paul, dude. You didn't trust me, TJ. You didn't trust me, TJ. Paul, shut the fuck up! I trusted you just fine. Bitch. I'm your friend, TJ. I'm here to help you, and you're here to help me. That's what friends are for, TJ. Paul, shut up, dude. That's so. F shut up. That has nothing to do with anything. There's nothing. To that do has with everything anything. to do with everything, TJ. No, it does not. What do you think I'm doing here in fucking swamp ass Louisiana, TJ? You think I generally wanted to fucking live in this fucking shit? <laughs> Came here for you and your brother Paul. and our friendship and our companionship. <laughs> okay. Fine. Fine, Paul. Fine. You don't trust me to pour a little fucking moonshine into your cup? <laughs> I'm too drunk to pour moonshine into a cup now? I'm a fucking three-year-old who's going to spill the moonshine? I stand corrected, Paul. You poured it expertly, dude. I'm hurt, TJ. Well, yeah. I'm hurt, TJ. I don't know, man. That's Deep down chance. inside of me, it hurts that you don't trust me after all this time. You know what I've done, TJ? What's that? I've moved halfway across the country because I believed in my collaboration with you and your brother, TJ. Yeah. Not once, but twice, motherfucker. Okay. Scotty don't question me like this. Scotty don't come to me and be like, I don't trust you, Paul. Oh, man, TJ. Move the fucking truth, TJ. I'm going to drink more. The people out there watching Deep Fat Fried know that I trust you. Yeah, fuck TJ! Fuck TJ! Fuck TJ! Fuck TJ! Fuck TJ! But you know what? Don't fuck TJ. Because I love TJ. And I love his brother Scotty. And I'm here to work with them and be friends with them and be fucking content creators with them. <laughs> oh my god. Please sit down, Scotty. What's up? Oh, really? 
The hell's she doing here? It's my fucking ride, dude. Oh, really? Bring her in here. Bring mom in here? Yeah. Yeah, dude. TJ's mom is here and Scotty's mom is here. She's Bring one of the... In. Let me be real, dude. She's one of the nicest fucking ladies, dude. I'm just going to give her my mic and let her say whatever she wants about prohibition. Mom, come on in here. She doesn't have to stay. You know what I mean? But we can just get her to say whatever the she audience thinks. audience wants to say hello to you. They really come want to say hi to you. It should. It We've been. Not. Look at this. Sit De- down. Look at. Where are we right here. Where Scotty sits normally. Sit right here next to me. It's too bright in here. It'll show all my wrinkles. No. It, no. Fine, D- look at my fucking face. Be honest. With, like, you're going to look you awesome know. sitting next to me. We drank yeah, all of did. it. Look at this sit here. Calm down. So here, just like put this pretty as close as to your face as is, is, is uh, You're comfortable. Not on the camera, yeah, scooch dude. over a little bit. Come here, over let me here. move some of this stuff out of the way for you. Just make yourself comfy. There you go. Now just keep the microphone in here. Here, I'll help you. I help. Sit you. on down. I look older than you, mom. I don't know what you're even whining. Yeah, about. so go ahead and get Scotty talks pretty close to the mic. So just talk pretty close to the mic. Yeah, I'll turn her up. Okay. Yeah, turn your mom. Well, you don't have to turn her up. Don't do that because then when Scotty sits back down, it's gonna be crazy. It just, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Dude. All right, it probably doesn't. Okay, which is I'll my good side? lower it back down. Every side is your good side. So you're sitting. Look at what you're sitting next to on the couch. I'm a fucking nightmare. So hold on now. <laughs> hold on. This is Pauline Sabin, the socialite. Okay. Okay. She was the wife of Charles Sabin, who was chairman of the board of the Guarantee Trust Company and an heiress in her own right. So she inherited a bunch of money. She was like rich. Yeah. Not like any of us she who was, uh, had to make it for ourselves. The first woman to ever serve on the Republican National Committee. Interesting. The founder and first president of the Women's National Republican Club and a major fundraiser for the presidential campaigns of Warren Harding, Calvin Coolidge, and Herbert Hoover. But Saban found the hypocrisy of prohibition intolerable was repelled by politicians who voted dry and then turned up at her dinner table expecting a drink. Hypocrites. Hi- hypocrites. She was pissed. Hypocrites. Pissed them damn hypocrites, dog. <laughs> Stupid hypocrites. <laughs> and she had a special aversion to the Women's Christians Temperance Union. Who could blame her? And the way it's President Ella Bool. <laughs> Claimed to speak for all American women. Wow, what does that sound like? Bullshit. Saban resigned in disgust from the, Nation- the Republican National Committee and helped found a new group that soon became the Women's Organization for National Prohibition Reform. Finally, a real fucking feminist. Hallelujah. Pauline Saban, motherfuckers. Yeah, you definitely got it. But l- hey, I wonder if she's related to Nick Saban. She might I don't be. I know, man. Can I ask you, can I ask you, how do you feel about, pro, like, you know about Prohibition, obviously, that it was illegal. Dude, how do mom's you f- a lush, dude. She drink all the time. Well, I know that. I've drank with your mom. She against, she's against, dude. She loves. I've booze. had a bunch of drinks with your mom, but I'm just saying, yeah, like. Our mom, your mom, you're definitely against Prohibition. We know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. My mom is not pro-Prohibition. But do you, Correct. do you see any lessons in it? Uh. Yeah, that it shouldn't have ever been done. Why? You you can't control what people are going to do with their lives. I mean, it's just like trying to tell people they can't smoke weed. If they're going <coughs> to smoke weed, they're going to do it. Hell legal yeah. Legal or not legal. My mom's cooler than yours. Your mom's cooler than everybody's mom. My mom's cooler than yours is. <laughs> it's just, it, but that's the truth, though. It's ridiculous to think that you're going to stand in the way of what people want to do with their own bodies. Exactly. And that's what prohibition was about. It was about saying, like, we're going to tell you not to do this. And wh- what happened was yeah. that people just did it more. They were just like, fuck you. I'm going to drink more now. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. Someone said TJ is his mother. Cool. TJ and his mom. Dude, oh, it's so cool. Baby. You can see so much of TJ and his mom and vice versa. Hey, look at the shirt I'm wearing. I know. It says Brood High. Brood High. See? <laughs> and the, their hair is cooler than They my got mom. the same hair. <laughs> <laughs> T 
TJ's Mama 2020, dude. I'm telling you, dude. You should run for office. I, I could do it. Local, local, like Louisiana, like office, and start there, dude. You'd be fuck. You'd 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 win immediately. What do you think you'd do a Democrat, Republican, or Independent? Yep. You get to pick. Who I cares? Put none of the above. Oh, that's Nothing. even better than none of the above party. Oh man, your mom's gonna be the next president, dude. <laughs> I, it's over. I wish, dude. I want to be connected with powerful people. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're almost actually done with this shit. Uh-huh. Scotty, do you want to Do you want to sit here next to your mom for a minute? I'm going to go pee. Down, bro. Oh, my baby. My little baby. Oh, dude. Everybody can see all of us together. The Kirk. It's all Kirk's on screen yeah, now. Dude. Scotty, sit down, dude. Sit down, but sit down where Paul was. I feel dude. like I can't act like a. Too drunk to realize. I, Paul's oh shit! Up. Paul's not here anymore. You can sit where Paul was, dude. Here, dude. It's the Kirk show now. Well, I guess my mom is a dude. I fucking whatever. I know. Dude, Kirk. I fucking feel like it feels weird being drunk on your mom. Be like, oh shit, Kirk. dude. So I, better, I better fucking behave, you're dude. Scotty's designated hey. driver, right? I better fucking behave, right? Yes. <laughs> I guess I don't yes. know. Scotty keeps attacking right. me, mom. Can you tell him to stop? Oh, he probably learned it from me, little little sucker. All the times he tried to run from me when he was little. Tell an embarrassing story about Scotty. Oh my God. Uh, okay, let's see. Embarrassing what? story about Scotty. Then I want an embarrassing story about TJ too. All right, Scotty used to have night terrors. Yeah. And he also used to sleepwalk. Oh yeah, dude. And we had company over one one oh, night. Oh, I know what she's gonna tell. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Fucking, <laughs> dude, oh, fuck. fuck. You. That's, not, that's an embarrassing one. There's an embarrassing one coming about you, TJ. Hey, I don't know, man. This is pretty crazy. Oh, <laughs> uh, whatever, dude. He fuck you. Dude. Downstairs, and I guess he thought he was in the bathroom, and he walked out in front of all of our company, and he pulled his pants down and took a piss. Well, I had to fucking piss, dude. <laughs> I had to fucking piss, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You were all like, oh my god, what the fuck? I'm a boss motherfucker, dude. I whip my shit out. I'm like, what's up? Oh, man, I'm like, dude. he's sleepwalking. He's sleepwalking. He really doesn't know he's doing this. And they're probably impressed, dude. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, All right, yeah. so what's your embarrassing me story? Oh, my God. Oh, that, that's fucking uh, tough, dude. Uh, too many to choose which from. One? Which one? Which one? She's got to, like, go through the roll of Oh, dude, every mom has a fucking... Yeah, TJ's dude. Story. Oh, there's a fucking catalog of embarrassing moments for all of us. There's a lot of TJ embarrassing TJ moments. So whatever one you fuck. Whatever feel, one. Yeah, I don't want to put one in your mind. That's one. The best. Whatever you what comes naturally I, to I you. I think the first thing that just came to my mind, and I don't know if this is really embarrassing, but it was a, it was the time where you guys got brought home by the police for trespassing. <laughs> oh God, dude, I forgot about that. I didn't. TJ, oh, I didn't. <laughs> oh God, dude, remember your dumbass friend Nate. Who tried to fucking tell the dumbest lie? Oh my God, dude. I had to pee. We were fucking arrested. You got arrested, and dude. Nate, really arrested. Well, whatever. We were detained. Am I detained? Am I being detained? No, <laughs> Nate was uh, Nate was like, oh, we just went in there to take a piss. And I just told the cops, like, don't listen to him. He's a moron. We were just curious. We were just, we, just, we looked in there. We just were curious about what was in there. It was open. We just went in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm you know sorry. what's you know more fucked up about Nate? Everybody told me he found out later he fucking was arrested for, like, diddling a kid, dude. No, I made what? that up. I just fucked Oh, up. dude, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, oh, dude, you got me, dude. Oh. Dude, that's fucking... Uh, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That just made me... You know what, it. though? In my in my defense, that motherfucker seemed like he would do that shit. Yeah, he did. Thank you. Know, you. I said it. Cause Mom, I did he not... Was well, he not a fucking weird motherfucker, yeah, dude? Was, Nate was. sucked, dude. That was my did? worst friend ever. Yeah, that was your worst fucking friend, dude. Yeah, that was pretty much... But no, that made me think of uh, the time that when 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 TJ was little, like yeah. he was about three years old. Three years old. We told What's him up? that there was a. Uh, oh, alligator. I've told him this before. There oh, was an shit. alligator in the hot tub. Gotcha. Because All he right. kept trying to go in the hot tub, and he was gullible enough at that age to believe, oh my God, there's an alligator in the hot tub. So he stayed away from it. Well, like he was probably like what eight or ten years old, something like that. And you I think it was like 12. I don't know. It was like ridiculously old. <laughs> I know, right? It was horrible. <laughs> uh, he brings all these friends over to me. And it's, where were you, at school or something? It was when I was volunteering. No, no, it was, it was, uh, I told it to my fucking therapist I had, that one, that tall dude. Okay, you got to tell, oh, yeah, 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 okay. It's like, mom, tell him about the alligator in the hot tub. And I'm like, what are you talking about? 
you know, when I was little and we lived in California and we had that alligator in our hot tub and I looked at you and I just started laughing and the look of horror on your face when you realized that I had fucking lied to you. Dude, <laughs> and you know what's fucking Dude, I funny? I totally had by that Dude, shit. It, it, and she just asked, to, I, I remember when we were kids, he's like, there's no Santa. Mom, there's no Santa. We are, we Dude, are I know you. I was so skeptical of so much shit, but, but I you believe in alligator in a fucking hot tub, you uh, idiot. Uh, this yeah. is my most gullible shit. Yeah. I stopped God, believing dude. in Santa at like five. Yeah, I don't believe in Santa. I stopped believing in I don't God believe in at like Easter ten. Bunny. I didn't believe in all this shit, but I believed in that fucking <laughs> stupid alligator till I was twelve years fucking old. God, you're no! fucking. God, you're fucking yeah, but stupid. Wouldn't that have been awesome if you really did have an alligator in the hot dude, tub? Dude, I remember. He, look, <laughs> dude, you know what's fucked up? I have memories of me as a kid. Looking into that fucking hot tub. Yep. Because I could see the whole thing. All of it. <laughs> and I was like, I don't see no fucking alligator. Dude, I remember this shit too. Like, but mom said there was one and she wouldn't lie. <laughs> no, she didn't. There's, there's, there's gotta that, be some kind of secret there were, dimension with an alligator. There was that pool. Away. There was a pool in fucking Pen, on the, the Penn's Chapel house. And, like, and there was a hot tub room. You guys built the hot tub onto it. Yeah. And TJ, like, me and TJ went down. I'm like, let's get in the hot tub. And he's all like, no, there's probably an alligator in it. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? I'm like, I looked oh, at it. You, you know what, bitch? In that one too. You know what? You just fucking, me and my friend Nick, dude. N- you and Nick. We told Scotty. Oh. Well, everyone we heard the story. told Scotty. Yes. That was hilarious. That he was born. As a gumball. As a gumball. From a gumball machine. A literal gumball that mom got out of a gumball machine. Okay, but you also and told me, to me. Put in an bawling. incubator. But you know you told hold me, on, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you also. Hold on. No, 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 I wanted to be a Dorito. We convinced Scotty that the life cycle of a human being is they're born as a particular <laughs> food, put in an incubator. I was five. And then brought to maturity. <laughs> I was literally five. a human Wait. at some point. He, he believed it and he came Wait, hold on. Me. Mom, go ahead. Go ahead, he Mom. He came to me crying and he's like, Mom, I was a gumball. Why was I a gumball? I'm not a Dorito. <laughs> I okay. want to be a Dorito, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Dude, dude I, just, I wanted to believe I was a fucking dude, Dorito. Scotty, I mean, I as, look, as cynical and hardened as Scotty is now, he was the most gullible little kid you've ever seen in your fucking life. I'm convinced the reason he doesn't believe shit now is because of all the total nonsense I told him. Wait, and what about all the shit that Uncle Guy used to tell you guys? Oh my god, he <laughs> fucked with both of us, dude. <laughs> and he was so straight-faced. I know. Dude, the best thing about Uncle Guy was, was like, TJ was so used to like years of deceiving you. Because TJ would always give it to my mom I did something wrong or something bad. Then Uncle Guy is like, okay, I'm going to pull the same bullshit with him. I'm going to tell him some fucking... I cut t- my mattress yeah, you were, Yeah, you, you had that knife. Yeah. And I came in there, and TJ was picking his mattress open. I'm like, I'm going to tell Uncle Guy. He's all like, Good I just say you did it. <laughs> You're going to be in trouble again. Don't do, don't tell anyone. So I tell him, and TJ goes there, and TJ has innocent little TJ face on. Scotty done it. Oh what God! Oh God! Just look. when you guys carved the 311 into the siding Scott, of the no, house. No, I did that. Scotty didn't do that. TJ did I that. I know. <laughs> No, what? No, no, dude, listen. But you chose. That emboldened him. him. So I remember, look, I, I have memories in my head of being like four, and Scotty was like, I don't know, two or something. Okay. Like a toddler. And I remember, like, messing things up intentionally and being like, Scotty did it, and you'd just be like, yep. <laughs> because the great thing about Scotty as a kid was he was so poorly behaved. That literally anything awful. I blamed on him, no matter how believed. awful I was and what horrible thing I'd done, he genocided the, the Jews. Believe it. Mom and Dad and Steve and everybody would just instantly believe oh, it because Scotty was so bad. <laughs> like he was a, he was such an obnoxious. Like he was horrible as a kid. Like he would threaten to like kill people and shit. Like he'd be like, <laughs> "Mom, I'm gonna kill you." He every day if one of Steve's guys came to the house and they pissed. 
Scotty off. You're fired. You're fired. It's like a little Donald Trump. He'd walk up, he'd walk up into the house. Steve, and he, uh, you Steve's see the genesis would, of this they shit? They would walk up in the house and they'd say, Steve, I got fired again. Could I have my job back? He goes, oh, man. Scotty's at it again. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty's always firing people. You're and shit. fired. I'm going to commit suicide. Dude, that's how great my oh, fuck... Oh, yeah, dude. This constant suicide threats. I was always threatening to kill himself. Suicide. <laughs> I'm going to commit suicide. <laughs> suicide, dude. Suicide, dude. Suicide. <laughs> I don't even know what suicide was, dude. I was like, I'm gonna commit suicide. I had no idea what that even meant. I just, I just wanted to say it. Yeah, that's it, dude. Scotty, you remember that direction argument we had as kids? Oh God, dude. Oh my God. Dude. Never eat shredded wheat, dude. There you go. Yeah, because I remember. You're like, what direction though? North, south, east, west. He fucking like. I arbitrarily he, picked he a direction. Arbitrarily just picked a direction. Look, north, south, east, west. <laughs> like, how do you know it's I'm north? Like, you don't know that's north though. So yes. It's based on a false premise, and he's like, "Fuck you, you're an idiot." And he <laughs> argued with me all night, and he woke up the next morning. He's like, "Oh shit, I was totally wrong about that. I see what he was saying now." <laughs> And no, 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 no. Like weeks later, no, like I guess you were right. About no, that wasn't. No, 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 no. That's right, not I'm how that went. Go ahead, tell your fucking bullshit version. No, we argued for like hours at night, and finally you're like. We argued throughout an entire night. To the and then finally tired at school. And then finally, no, no. Finally, after hours, like two or three hours, you're like, "How do you know it's north?" And I'm like, I'm like, "Oh." And finally, clicked in my mind. I'm like, "What you were saying?" I'm like, "Oh, he's saying like that might not be north." And you're like, "Yeah." <laughs> But dude, that's the thing. I'm so fucking. I was so stubborn as a kid. Like I would not listen to anyone else. Like that's that's really what it was. I wouldn't oh listen. Oh my god, so much has changed since then. Scotty would never do that now. <laughs> dude, Scotty as a kid is exactly how you'd expect Scotty as a fucking kid to be. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. Um. It, it was a good thing he was the second child. Sorry, and what? Not the first Go ahead, Paul. One. I was just saying we almost did this. We almost got to the end of this. We almost did a whole DM. We're finished with that. No, no, we didn't finish it. We're finished. What did we do? Prohibition. All right, well, the end hold of prohibition. on. What's left? <laughs> I got to the end of the article. I read the end of Prohibition thing. Oh, you did? Yeah, and dude. I did. All right, Prohibition failing fully to win. Prohibition ended. The end. All right, so what's what's next on this trip down memory lane here? <laughs> uh, okay, here's one with uh, Scotty and... Uh, Stevie okay that I was not present for but I still think this is a, the most hilarious freaking story ever yeah they were in McDonald's uh huh how old were they and it wasn't too long ago maybe it was recent yeah maybe like three or four years ago three or four years ago and uh, this little kid kept aggravating the heck out of them uh-huh. and so Scotty tells Stevie go tell that kid you're Satan <laughs> yeah. and so yeah. The kid <laughs> kept saying, "What's your name? What's your name? What's your name?" And you know, Stevie's just like, "Oh God!" So, so finally, he he tells the kid, "My name's Satan," and he said the kid's eyes lit up, and he was like <laughs> running across the room, and he goes, "Mommy, mommy, mommy! I just met Santa!" <laughs> Damn, like, dude! Oh man, the kid! Damn! <laughs> oh yeah! Dude, while we're at it. Stevie was a son of a fucking bitch as a kid, dude. Stevie would fucking... Oh, my God. Stevie sucks. Dude, I might have been a little fucking prick, but Stevie was like a fucking violent prick, dude. I know what, you know what? Scotty was an annoying shit, dude. I'll tell you what, Paul and everybody watching... You were annoying shit, too, though, shut TJ. Up. No, whatever, bitch. Dude, you, you fucking... Were, ground you were a fucking on, arrogant dude. fucking prick, mom, dude. Mom, an arrogant on, fucking hold on, prick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mom, 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 An mom, arrogant mom, prick, mom, dude, mom, that always mom, mistreated me. Shut up. That mom, always mistreated me. Mom. Mom! Mom! Did Mom! Not. You're an arrogant prick, you're dude. You're scared of the truth, aren't you? Okay. No, you're an arrogant Mom, prick, let me though. ask you this question. Did Scotty, or did Scotty not, follow me emu- everywhere and emulate me and act like I was God? Yes. No, I yes. did not. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh! Yes, no. he did. Oh, shit. No, that's not fucking true, That is dude. true. You know that is not fucking true, dude. You know dude. what? I'll that's... be honest with you. I hated it when it was happening, but when it stopped and he started asserting his own identity, I felt really sad. Yeah. I really... I, hey, I remember I the didn't day appreciate it when up. it was happening. No. I remember he woke up... It was a couple of years. 11 years old, and all I could think of is, I want my little Scotty back. Now, I know he was a handful, 
but he like worshipped the ground I walked on. And then one day he woke up <coughs> and I was his enemy. That was like the most heartbreaking <laughs> thing on the face of the planet. I'm like, but I want my little Scotty back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It was like that for me too. Yeah, I know. Scotty so probably went, went through the same thing. He went from, <laughs> yeah, I did. You know, I did, I hated it at the time, but after Scotty stopped worshiping the ground I walked, I was like, man, I miss Scotty, dude. <laughs> Mr. <missed the> real <laughs> Scotty. You're a little fucking sycophant. Yeah, you, know, you know, I have my little sycophantic butt kicked, and then, just like, and, You're always right, TJ. Gee, <laughs> shocks. And then I was like, you're always wrong, TJ. Yeah, and it's never been that way ever since. <laughs> I miss sycophant Scotty, dude. I miss sycophant <laughs> Scotty. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool, though. Uh, there is an appeal newsreel, I guess, we could take a look at. Um, this is uh, from the very end of Prohibition. I don't know why I'm suddenly trying to get back on the topic for a second. But for the sake of completionism, let's take a look at this newsreel. Oh, we need headphones. The decisive vote of the 36th state against prohibition is happy news for the grain raisers of the United States and for many others throughout the land. With an eye on December 5th, work is being rushed in distilleries and bottling works. Thousands are being called back to work in plants of allied industries. At least... 500,000 new jobs are predicted as a result of repeal. From keg and barrel factories, perhaps the most closely allied line, immediate benefits from repeal extend into almost every line of business and commerce. However, everyone's not waiting until December 15th. The lid is off in many places, with the downfall of prohibition being celebrated in real old-time hilarity. Yes, and by the renewal of old equations. Hotels and nightclubs report a real pre-war spirit. They're basically, uh, Mom, I know you're not wearing headphones, so I'm just going to tell you they're celebrating the end of Prohibition here. Oh, okay. I'm celebrating. They're happy. They're saying <laughs> how the barrel manufacturers are happy and all sorts of They're saying, are. and a lot of cities aren't even waiting until the actual yeah. day. Yeah, they're not waiting for the official <coughs> end. They're just already like, It's like, it's again, fuck it. The end of bullshit Prohibition. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you, were know, you know this or not, Mom, but... Um, uh, there was like a uh, this thing about prohibition was it was like a, one of the big first victories for the feminist movement because like at the time prohibition like salooning going to saloons and stuff that was like a male activity women weren't really welcome at bars unless they were like you know basically prostitutes or something so a lot of these men would go they'd work these long hours during the day to support their family but then they'd end up spending all their money on booze and going home and beating their wife and beating their kids Yay! and uh, so the feminists of the time were like you know this has got to stop this is a major social ill so that's the impetus for ending pro we cover the um, you we really cover can't th- blame them for <coughs> it do we cover the Snopes article uh, we got a Snopes article here hmm. Sit back in on this one. go ahead Paul Shit, dude. You want me to leave? Um, let's see. I don't want anybody to leave. Go ahead and Paul, just sit in the middle. You can just kind of direct it between you and my mom. Uh Uh-oh. I got a vape. Uh, Who claims the vape? Sweet. Go ahead and sit in the middle, Paul. (laughs) I don't want my mom to leave this. People are loving my mom being here, dude. Oh, yeah. They love her. They want her mic up, but, I mean, her voice is just real soft. Switch spots with your mom. Because she'd be better on my mic because she's quieter and farther away. And you'd be better on your mic because you're louder. And go, yeah. Just go ahead and switch places with my mom then. God. You switch places with Scotty, I guess. Go ahead. Oh, my God. You're, you're forcing me to get up, dude. Well, I'm trying to Scotty, help. come on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work. Dude. You're a fucking monster, TJ. Please? I'm begging Please? you, dude. Please? Please? No, I respect you, Scotty. Come on. I'm just showing actually, you. Actually, you, actually, you know what, TJ? You have no respect, dude. You have no fucking respect, I buddy. I do. That's why I'm asking you nice. Please. I think it's going to be better for the show if you move with Paul. I'm not trying to roast you. I'm being respectful. Hey, come on. You know I'm not disrespecting you, Scotty. Come on, dog. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing that, Scotty. Sit on down, please. I'm sorry. Scott, mom, pull Scotty over there. What? What went up your butt? What? The microphone. Yeah, it went mi- up your butt. The microphone. Why went is up the her microphone butt? going up your butt? I don't know, but it smells wonderful. I don't wonderful. want to think of things going up my mom's butt on this show. Come on. It's going up my butt. butt. What are you gonna do? I guess nothing. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Shut up, TJ. What were we doing again? All right. So here we go. 
So Scotty's going to have his own mic. What were we doing, Scotty though? Mike. What's the purpose of this again? I don't know. We are, we're, we're looking, <laughs> the Snopes article. we're looking at the Snopes oh, article. Oh, the Snopes article. Right, 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 right. Okay, so this Snopes Beep. article. Woo, Snopes article. Did the U.S. government Did the U.S. government. Pour, pour. Okay, so this is a, a I believe thing. It. Paul, you want to talk about your feelings about this? <laughs> so this is something that I, like, right before we started the show, and Scotty will back me up on this. He was like, Paul, did you pull some shit about how the government poisoned people during Prohibition? And I was like, actually, that never happened. And he was like, what? And I was like, no, 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 seriously, it didn't. And he, sh- he looked at the article and he was like, wow. It's like, damn, dude. But I felt the same way. This was something that I definitely went looking for because I was like, yeah, we got to talk about that. But it never happened. And we can read the Snopes article to kind of wrap everything up here. Clout S, I see what you're saying. And... Don't fucking say that, you piece of shit, okay? Uh Uh-oh. I'm just saying that much. Don't fucking pull on that thread any further or your ass is gone. All right, so here we go. DJ's mean. (laughs) Did the U.S. government purposefully, purposely... You put an F in there. I know, I just took it back. (laughs) Oh, okay. Take it back, take it back. Did they poison 10,000 Americans during Prohibition? Did they do that? There's a claim. In 1926, the federal government poisoned uh, alcohol to curb consumption during Prohibition. <laughs> what are you whispering? Nothing. I just said... Oh, shit, I heard something. I, uh, well, ma- Don't, worry me, Don't worry about it, Allow me to retort, Don't worry about it. You're doing a great job. This is a great read. I said you're fucking wasted. Let's this bring is it a home, good TJ. read. I didn't talk about the read. I said you're you know, wasted. You know, you fucking pieces of shit read it. Then it's okay. on your screens too. Go right. ahead, read, read it. it. Fine, I'll read it. All right, Superior no problem. Fine, I'll read no it. No problem. Skills, Paul. Go up, TJ. Go up. When the man, manu- okay, hold on. In 1926, the federal government poisoned alcohol to curb consumption during prohibition. Terrible read. By the time prohibition, oh, that's an awful read. Terrible wow, read. You're, so you're so wasted, Paul. Shut up, TJ. Why are you so wasted? You piece of shit. The show. Has now become the TJ show. Listen. What, what has it not been, you piece of shit? Ever, faggot. I am the god of DFF. Oh, God. Here it comes. No, dude, that's Senor Tomato. Fuck these pieces of shit. That is dude, you know what? Fuck <laughs> them, dude. Oh, it is this I. Is about it is me. I. Senor Tomato. The TJ show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing, dude. I love it. <laughs> Woo! I'm fine with that. Dude. I'm you know fine what? with that. Fuck what? Why me? Fuck Scotty! I'm fine with being an ensemble My player in the TV right, sh- TJ you know show. Hey! Fuck you, bitch. Hey, get off my show, dude. Get off my fucking show, this bitch. Is my show, my show! <laughs> You're fucking censored, TJ. You're fucking censored, children, dude. Children, children, children. You're a fucking worthless hey, piece of shit. No. TJ. I'm done TJ, with you. TJ, make sure there's no pencils in the area. I'm fucking done no with pencils? you. Oh, shit. We got to tell that story. <laughs> what is this? We got to tell that story, TJ. What this is the craziest is shit <laughs> ever. Dude, when we were in New Orleans for the DP meetup. <laughs> hold I w- let me, hold on. Wait, let me do you remember? Queen Rogers on the screen. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scotty, go back over there. Shut up. No, go back over there. there. Stay there. It's fine. Look, TJ. In New Orleans, I woke up one morning and you were having kind of a, an argument with your brother. And your mom was there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was the craziest Because your ass didn't want to go anywhere. What were you hold, on, hold on. Let Paul tell this. We're going to shut up. Paul, start from the beginning. Tell I'm the tell, story. This is just from my perspective. I wake up and I hear kind of a heated conversation going on. And I'm like, all right, let's go check this out. Let's see what's happening. I go outside. And TJ and Scotty are fucking at each other's fucking throats, dude. They're at each other's fucking throats. They're going crazy. And TJ, Scotty's like, fuck you, TJ. You want, me, you want me to show you how much fucking power I got? I'll fucking kick your fucking ass, bitch. And, Scott, and TJ was like, get off my stage, you fucking plebeian. You know what I mean? He was just like, I was like, what is going on? And, Scott, and his mom, she's doing exactly what she's doing right now. She's just standing there going. And all of a sudden, Scotty's like, you motherfucker, do you want to see how fucking real I am? I'll stab your fucking ass. And he grabbed a pencil off the fucking table. And TJ stands up and he goes, oh, yeah, you can stab me. Stab me, dude, motherfucker. And Scotty did it. <laughs> He stabbed him! 
The teacher was like, ow! <laughs> and I was like, I told you I'd do it! <laughs> and then, hold on, dude. The fucking craziest shit hasn't happened yet. Oh, shit! No, that, that's not where it stops, though. I know, right? So he stabs him, and teacher's like, <laughs> Finally, he's, at first he's like, ow! Fuck you, motherfucker, you stabbed me! And then he was like, whatever, you didn't even break the skin. This guy was like, I will break the skin, motherfucker! It's got, and TJ, and that's that's I think when TJ said the get off my stage, you pleb. And Scotty did the most crazy shit I've ever seen. Crazy. <laughs> he did a flying air karate kick <laughs> like somebody in Street Fighter does. It's true. Every word of that is true. He was like, you want, you want me to see TJ? You want to see how serious I am? And he fucking does a karate kick and lands it <laughs> on TJ's face. TJ's sitting there on the couch and Scotty just kicks him. Like in the air. I've never seen anything like that in real life. He went fucking crazy. Oh my god, dude. Dude, fucking TJ had that shit coming. It's true. Every word of it is fucking true. No, I know. Dude, it's because TJ fucking. This all stemmed from this. We're. We came, we came, Scooch over. we came down to New Orleans for a fucking week, and TJ had not done shit. He literally went up the street to eat fast food, and I'm like, TJ, we really need to fucking go somewhere, dude. Let's actually do something. He's down like, Dad, you tell me what you do, Scotty. And I'm like, No, TJ, we're gonna go somewhere. You're fucking being a shut in. You're on a fucking vacation. Go somewhere and do something. And he's like, No, I'm not doing it, bitch. And then, and I was like, TJ, you're fucking gonna leave this goddamn house. I'm, I'm fucking sick of this shit, dude. You've been here fucking smoking pot every day. Get off your fat, lazy fucking ass and do some. You gonna tell me what's what? <laughs> and you know what's funny is after all the shit went down, and that's pretty much when the fight just happened. Was that we went to the same restaurant and we had, and we kind of eaten it, like kind of looked at each other. Kind of, <laughs> that was fucking hilarious, yeah. dude. It's like, what's up, TJ? Went? We went to a restaurant. And Scotty was at the next table over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And we're just kind of like, "Hey, Scotty, how you doing now?" Yeah, it was, it was me and mom. <laughs> Let's act like we didn't karate each other I fucking know, two minutes ago. And mom had to get in between us because we wanted to keep wanting to keep fighting. I literally had to pull. I'm oh, sorry. <coughs> I, I literally had to pull Scotty out of the freaking house. Like by his arms, and he kept wanting to go back in. I'm like, no, no, we're we're going. Come on, where are you going? to Well, go TJ in? wanted to fight too, but you were in the middle, and, and like none of us wanted to hurt you, so that kind of like diffused it. Cause like, TJ's like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, Scotty. You're gonna beat, you know, I'm like, oh, you're gonna hit mom too. You're like, no, I'm not gonna hit fucking mom. I'm like, then actually then, says, ha 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 ha. I then, remember. Then no, then, then TJ, then you're all like, you know what? I respect for mom. I'm not gonna beat your ass. But mom's trying to whoop your fucking ass, bitch. <laughs> and I'm all like the same thing. Like, you're lucky mom's here, too. So I'd be whooping your ass if she wasn't here, bitch. And mom dragged me out of the fucking building, dude. She's like, no, I'm like, I'm going to go. And I was like, but mom kept getting in my way. And I was like, well, I'm not willing to do something to mom because, I mean, it's my mom. Of course not. <laughs> so you were lucky, bitch. So I don't whoop your fucking you're ass. You're lucky, bitch. You're fucking lucky, bitch. You were lucky. You're dude, fucking lucky, dude. You're know the indomitable fucking snowman. You know the best thing about this is, fucking dude? Tombstone pile drive your ass. The best thing about this is, is that this wasn't even abnormal in you guys' relationship. It's like Scotty <laughs> went on and had a totally normal day with his mom. We went out and had a total, totally normal day. And then eventually it was just smoothed over and everything went on as per usual. So it right. wasn't even like, like this is one of those things that a lot of people would tell the story and he'd be like, yeah, and that's when our fucking relationship broke up. <laughs> but this is just a, like, you know, and, like it's, it's just another <laughs> it's another speed bump in you guys' relationship, but it just like went on like nothing happened. You know what I mean? I've never karate kicked somebody, dude. I've never done it. <laughs> I have in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mom, I'm going to let you end this show with your words of wisdom, right. dude. Whoa, my <laughs> words of wisdom. Okay. There you uh, go. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. Seriously. And whatever you're going to do in life, be relentless. All right, man. Words of inspiration. Thank you. From Best my mama. Ever. Best show ever. Best show ever. Best, Best show, show ever. ever. Best, Best show, show ever. ever. Fuck you, I'm chat. glad you're all drunk. <laughs> we'll need your tricks. Listen, chat. Fuck. One more for the road. You. One. I'm going to finish it off. Oh. Whoa, oh. Yeah. Scotty. Fuck you, chat. 
Don't eat the cherries. <laughs> hey, chat. Thanks for watching. I, Thanks. I love you Good guys. Good night. Thank you guys for checking it out. Hey, guys, let's just listen to a few comments from fans. Best show ever, best show ever. They're all chanting best show ever. Someone best said four ever. out of ten, but best one person, everyone's saying best of the best. Best of the best. Best of the best. How do you top it? Go to the DP subreddit. Tell those fucking faggots that aren't patrons they're pieces of shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. For our patrons, for the fucking DFF community, this is Deep That's Fat Fried signing the fuck <laughs> out, you pieces of garbage! <laughs>